so whenever I say you're good and then from there, so Okay. Hello, welcome to uh, I Can't Keep Getting Away With This, the show where I keep getting away with showing Quest for Glory at Questing for Glory. Um, so we're going to play all five Quest for Glory games, one through five, taking a character through the entire series. Bit of a return to form. Uh, we're going to be doing each game 100%ing them as a fighter. Joining me on this journey, I've got a couple of veterans on me with the couch. Gentlemen. Hello. I am Crow. I'm probably better known for playing as a uh, magic user slash wizard through these games, but um, yeah, I quite enjoy them, and I'm happy to uh, provide a little bit of chatter along the way. That was definitely a good point. Uh, my name is Mr. P.R. Miller. I am known for playing a thief, and because I'm a thief, I never play 100%. However, I know the games well enough to be dangerous. Maybe not David dangerous, but dangerous. I'm dangerous. I mean David. I'm David. Hi. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and just start working on our character just for a little bit. Um, a couple of things. It is very common for new fighters to want to start Quest for Glory 1 with climbing. Do not. You get points for learning climbing in Quest for Glory 4. You are prohibited from taking climbing in this collection run. But you are okay to take some magic, and I'm going to actually do that to get some extra points in Quest for Glory 3. Uh, my remaining points are going to go 5 into strength, the rest into agility. And then for our character name, as much as I would like to do the full questing for Glory 6, I have to type that name out twice during the run. So let's oh, yeah. just... Let's just shorten it to QFG6. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. I object. Continue. <laughs> Objection ignored. All right, let's get this started in three, two, one, go. Uh, Y'all take the lead for now. Sure. Uh, so we start out in town here, and uh, I guess we should do a quick overview of what the heck this is. This is a point-and-click adventure game slash... Um, Western style RPG hybrid game. So essentially puzzles kind of split between using um, typical Sierra adventure game uh, sorts of solutions, or sometimes uh, you just use your stats, which you gain over the course of the game by actually performing actions. And as you do, um, you gain the relevant stats. So, um, if you, for example, throw rocks a whole bunch of times, you'll get better at throwing, you'll get some strength, that sort of thing. Um, a big part of why David took so much agility early on uh, was uh, that in this game, for some bizarre reason, just having a lot of agility makes the rest of your stats gain faster. Um, now, what's going on right now is we're getting a lot of apple rocks off of the ground. <laughs> um, now, the apple part is actually being ignored. The text parser ignores all but the last uh, noun that you throw at it. And um, speaking of throwing, we will throw some rocks, but the main reason we're getting this many is because this game has an encumbrance system, and we have massively over-encumbered uh, the uh, main character to such a degree that the weight has overflowed past the biggest number that it is able to comprehend and is now approximately the most negative number that is possible to comprehend. Um, this game I mean, applies a penalty in combat based off your encumbrance. So if you have massively negative encumbrance, then instead he's basically invincible. Mostly. Which usually means he will die at some point. Encumbrance is one of those things that really helps. But um, it, I mean, it definitely makes fights way safer, especially at night and especially with some of the uh, more rough enemies. He's going to be using this time now to uh, pretty much train up, um, train up. I'm guessing that agility skill uh, and a few other skills in order to be able to fight uh, pretty much the biggest barrier of this run, which is uh, who, uh, who we affectionately call Swordy Lordy. Uh, he is the weapons master who is without a doubt the most frustrating part of this game for many 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 new players who are trying to 100 percent it yeah so in if you want to get all 500 puzzle points you see the game is tracking at the top of the screen here um each of the three classes has some um 
a side quest for them to uh, kind of show off that they have mastered what their class is about. And for the fighter, um, apart from defeating one each of all the monsters around, there's also a uh, weapon master who is supposed to be like your trainer uh, in the middle of the castle. And um, in order to beat the weapon master, your stats just have to be really high. This includes evasion stats uh there's there's a uh, parry and there's dodge even if you don't dodge or parry during the fight just having more of that makes you more able to deal with it so we're returning to town to take care of some stuff abdullah do here is someone who's been uh had his riches stolen from him uh by the brigands who um kind of our main goal here is to get the brigand band taken care of and then some other stuff around town uh so we do sleep in the inn because that's worth points um and now it's the next day and we move over to rescue a fox and give some uh apples to a giant um you have to give a lot of apples but thankfully they're pretty cheap and now we've got the monty python reference uh we have the gargoyle here guarding uh erasmus's tower my first wants to know what is your name and then what is your quest and then whose spell protects the town the last question is the only one that actually is uh, randomly selected and has some bearing on uh, your understanding of the game um and the answer to that one was Arana. Arana is going to be one of those characters that shows up quite a bit. We're going to really see her deal uh, be dealt with in the fourth game. And I think the fifth game, if I remember the 100% route well enough. Nope. Uh, no, okay. We're well, not bringing, in that case. I... We're not bringing back Arana. Oh, well, if anybody is an Arana fan, I'm sorry. <laughs> um on that note, what David uh, does there is um, makes pretty much makes a beeline for every single place. Now, the, the, there are two versions of this game. There's the EGA version, which is the 16-color beauty masterpiece of art. And then there is a 256-color remake, glorious VGA. They run very similarly, but they're, for one, one of the biggest differences is the lack of a text parser. This game uses the text parser, and it flows much faster than the other game. Uh, what is interesting is the number of glitches that actually are uh, replicated in each one of the games as well. You can still do the weight overflow glitch. One of the things that um, was asked in chat that I thought was very interesting was, I've never seen a game that doesn't cap, st um, cap uh, certain uh, variables. And I said, actually, most of the variables are capped. Um, David will be capped at for each game so in this game his stats will be capped at 100 should he ever reach one and then each game it goes up by 100 so it shows the progression level of the character as he continues yeah the game discourages you from uh, encumbering yourself past a certain point that's more like 100 ish pounds <gasps> um it's based off of your oh did you get too close to the okay almost that was awfully close to that bear almost. <laughs> did you get too close to that bear before you uh appease it with some food uh that goes badly kobold uh cave is pretty dangerous um uh so he needs to actually stab the kobold he's been mostly training his defensive stats so there's a possibility he just fails to poke the kobold each time the kobold teleports off uh, the side of the room that indicates that he scored a hit uh there are lightning balls uh, balls flying um Earlier on, the first thing that he did was he threw a rock at a nest in order to get a uh, ring out from it, and he turned that into the healer. Uh, the healer gave him a couple of healing potions, and he drank, I think, both of those there in order to survive the lightning balls coming out from the kobold. Um, there's a lot of other ways to deal with the kobold as well. You can potentially be sneaky, but as a fighter, uh, one of the ways that you get points is by killing at least one of every type of enemy that is around. We have some saves coming going on here. He's got, um, the fetch spell, but he's not very good at it. But thankfully, the results of trying to snatch this seed out of the air is extremely random. So... There's still a pretty decent chance he's going to succeed, even with his uh, stat being as low as it is right now. So with just point. a bunch of saves coming, he'll oh, eventually get there. That was a source, and I ran away. Uh, so the weakest enemy in the game is uh, pur Purple Saurus. Weirdly, uh, it turns out to be kind of hard to encounter one. Um, it's... 
not super common um, at first, and eventually near the end of the game, once he scored a thousand experience points, which are different from puzzle points, but once he's gotten a thousand of those just by killing monsters and gaining stats generally, um, at that point, the enemy set shifts and the purple source has become even rarer. So he will actually need to get that second enemy set because uh, uh, the source Rex, the red version of the source, is a lot harder. And yeah, so I think David's actually going to be OK. So he does talk with the, the sor sorty lord here and then gets some practice in. I don't think he expects to win this attempt. I do oh. not. I, I rarely uh, get weapon use experience uh, in this run. So having extra sources of it is good. Weapon use usually is pretty slow to train because your uh, combat is over before you can get very many stabs. Not with Swordy, though. Mm -hmm. So now we're collecting the reward for having uh, rescued the Baronet, um, who we... It was the son of the Baron, obviously, who we uh, rescued from being a bear uh, in the Kobold's Cave. That was kind of what we were up to in that area. Work in the stables... And then talk here. to Carl. There we go. <laughs> and, and training with Swordy Lordy once again. Did I just glitch out the stat. music? It's not playing the music. I'm not hearing any music. Whoa! I, I, oh, I, hey, win on Sarai too. That's actually nice. quite lucky there. He advances time very quickly by just napping near the guard area and uh, then he gets thrown out of the castle at nighttime advancing the clock uh to when you want it to the time of day you want it to be is kind of an annoying thing you have to constantly worry about uh in this game so um did you actually have the uh the undead Un unguent at that point yep i used okay. it okay got it uh, so he protected himself from ghosts. Uh, if you're really fast, you can actually grab the Mandrake Root without doing that. But you have to grab the Mandrake Root at midnight, and you have to protect yourself from the ghosts. And we're about to have a lot of downtime in just a little bit here. But uh, this is Baba Yaga's hut, kind of flown in from a different lore than the rest of the things we're dealing with here. But uh we use the gem to bribe the gatekeeper skull, and then we get in with Hut of Brown now sit down, which we spelled slightly incorrectly. The game looks for Hut of Brown and then looks for now sit down in the text you put in. So you don't actually have to put the put Brown and now as separate words, just B-R-O-W-N-O-W -O -W works. Um, so you'll you'll see that again whenever he types it uh, the second time. But uh, at this point, we are dealing with Baba Yaga, who is going to try to eat us, but then we need to talk our way out of it by offering some things that she can cook uh, for um, an alternative. Uh, there are a couple points here in this otherwise very slow and annoying cutscene where David does have to um, say yes in order to indicate that he wants to not die um and if he forgets to do that then he just dies and has to go through this whole thing again so a little I, stressful even though it's pretty slow i haven't saved recently maybe i should save oh. okay i saved yes yes one of our <laughs> jobs is in fact to <laughs> pester you about safety saves <laughs> One of the weird things about speedrunning Quest for Glory, because Quest for Glory is a point-and-click game, but it is very open world in the way that many of the games approach things, which means that we have a kind of a balance that, balancing act that we want to pull. Um, we can metagame in lots of situations. Like, David actually already has everything he needs in order to be able to solve this puzzle that he's kind of signing up for right now. Uh, but if he were to decide to completely forget this part he could uh quest for glory is very open-ended there's usually a good ending and then a best ending so you can be a hero um or you can be a really good hero and this is going to complete every single one of them this is going to be the really good hero ending but along with that comes the number of glitches that this game has which are i mean as you saw the weight weight encumbrance glitch that has gone on the text parser uh is also very manipulatable 
there's a number of places where we found that you can just walk through walls because walls are just a suggestion in some ways. Uh, those are all very recent discoveries here. Kane has been absolutely phenomenal in finding those. And I, but, I say recent, but I guess it's been at least a year, hasn't it? <laughs> but there is a caveat to all of that, which is that I'm not playing version 1.0, the original Heroes Quest. Most versions of the collection run do use the original version 1.0 version, but I'm actually playing on version 1.2. And the reason for that is that the engine seems to run just a little bit faster on version 1.2. And while it does close off a few bugs, the amount of time I spend in combat means that I'm making a lot of that time back just because combat's faster. Yeah, the fighter compared to the other classes spends much more time doing kind of the RPG elements of the game uh, just because... You have to be strong enough to handle the fights. Um, there's no two ways around it. Um, this will continue to be a slight thorn in the side for most of the games, although um, eventually we get access to some powerful magic that will uh, make combat a lot easier. <laughs> But we are closing in at the end of this um, intermission here, as it were. Uh, we yeah. have to take Baba Yaga um, now-ish, because um, at the end of the game, whenever we return here, uh, we will have a mirror that will allow us to reflect the turn into a frog spell, and that's kind of how we beat Baba Yaga at the end. But once we have that mirror, um, we can't uh, go through in this uh in the ega version of the game uh it causes the game to skip unless you do some extra shenanigans uh skip the uh the side quest where you get a mandrake root uh so that uh, baba yaga can make some mandrake moose um we and, have done uh, all of this for three points yep three points is the sum total of what we have achieved for sitting here for, what is it, like seven minutes? Five? Five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Being what? a hero is boring sometimes. <laughs> That's why I play Thief. <laughs> That's why you play any percent. To be That's more fair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we are about to get back into the thick of things again. I believe at the next step here is trying to go on a... Uh, mad dash for all the rest of the uh, dispel potion ingredients. Well, there's two um, monsters that I want to kill first, which is the Cheetara and the Troll. And right, right now, those both only appear at night, although I could kill Fred for the Troll credit. But I yeah, want to kill the Cheetara being... now. Yeah, the, che the Troll and the Cheetara are interesting in that um, all of the classes uh, oh, wow. need to fight against them in order to get full points because uh, they have drops. Uh, in the ca case of the Cheetars, it's their claws. In the case of the Troll, it's its beard. Uh, but you need to turn into the healer to get some puzzle points there. Uh, you get a reward for turning it in, and that's just worth points. So one way or another, you've got to be able to handle the fights. Um, so now we're meeting the friendly Meeps. They're little fur balls with legs. And... Um, uh, they, as it turns out, we have no reason to think this yet, but we're going to need green fur. So we're just going to walk up to this meep and say, hey, can you rip some fur out of your face and hand it to me? And they say, yeah, sure, go for it. Um, next, we're going to dance for these fairies. Uh, if you don't dance for them, they will kill you. So please dance. Um, and then we will get some fairy dust. Again, we don't yet know that we need it, although this one's a little easier to guess. Uh, you do need to have an empty flask in order to do this, but thankfully, we recycle. Uh, we held on to the flask after we drank a healing potion earlier. Um, and pretty soon we're... Oh, wow, you can get the mushrooms without getting yes. killed while yes, you can. during the nighttime? Sheesh. <laughs> okay, yeah, is... so... Oh, this is one of the examples of David metagaming. He's getting all of these things without actually knowing he needs it. Quest for Glory is very forgiving in that sense. Uh, and then there's times whenever it's not. I mean, part of learning the route is learning what you can get away with. Uh, because you can get anything pretty much at any time. This is a troll, though. He's big. Yeah. Thankfully, he didn't troll us too hard. Um, it did take a little while for us to find one, but 
Uh, fight at least went pretty quick. Um, the troll is the strongest normal enemy in the game. Uh, we'll also be fighting Toro later. And usually the Weapon Master is way harder, but we got a little lucky and dealt with the Weapon Master before. Yep. Um, so this is the Dryads area. It's one of the few safe places where you can sleep. And uh, if you sleep there, it immediately starts the cutscene afterward. And yes. uh, we got an yes. acorn and instructions on how to uh, make a dispel potion. And okay, here's the purple source, so we don't have to worry about hunting that down later. David, yeah. are you grinding stats for um, the next game? No, um, Saurus Rex will not appear until you have 1,000 experience points. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. And uh, although killing monsters does give you experience points, um, practically speaking, the faster way to get experience points is just by grinding your stats. And as you gain stat points, you are assigned to experience points as well. And so just by gaining additional stats, you can do that. Plus, the stats will run into the next uh, game as well. Uh, Starting to run a little low on the HP there. <laughs> I'm Might want to save, too. Okay, good reminder. Thank you. <laughs> That's, he just got a lot done very quickly. A lot of it uh, RNG based also. So each of the three classes is a different way they're intended to make their way up to Enry the Ermit here, who's a friendly dude, and uh, talking with him will get a fair amount of points. This is a pretty common thing in these games. Uh, you get points just for collecting information from people, or at least having talked to people that should have given you information. Um, he's visiting the... Uh, uh, the north end of town and taking care of some stuff that most players will take care of like immediately but the fighter gets credit for buying armor which is really expensive um after he completed the uh the quest uh to rescue the prince of the area the baronet um uh, that gave him enough cash that he actually could do that and now he's turning in all the various things that uh, he collected for the healer and then picking up the dispel potion so essentially there are three main problems in the area uh in the area of spielberg um that you need to complete in order to uh, uh beat the game uh as with the true ending uh you need to rescue the baronet you need to uh drive the brigands from the land and then you need to drive the cursor uh uh, from the land so well as it turns out the princess uh bear uh, uh just uh elsa von spielberg is her name we'll see her again in the final game um she uh turns out to be enchanted to be the leader of the bring it brigands and she's doing a great job of it by the way um so we need to splash her with a dispel potion, and this is the thing you have to do to get the the minimal credit for completing the game. The any percent just does this. This room here in particular is extremely annoying and extremely particular about the order you need to move all the stuff to block the brigands. Um, this room here features Yorick, and it's kind of an MC Escher style maze. Yorick uh -huh. was the court jester slash court mage. Um, so he's kind of been keeping an eye on Elsa because he did figure out that Elsa was, in fact, the brigand leader. And once you indicate that you've kind of figured this all out, then you uh, deal with that. Uh, David actually activated a glitch that's used in the any percent for this category. Uh, sorry, uh, for the any percent category where uh, he cast a spell in order to unlock himself and be able to move around at a time when he's supposed to just be waiting for the brigand leader to... Um, uh, finish no mirror? transforming. I do have the mirror. Um, I'm just missing the four points for Saurus Rex, and I'm 14 experience short. So, bye, Fred. You gotta go. <laughs> I assume he's worth a lot of experience to kill. I don't know, but I'm just using him as you an opportunity for weapon use, and there we go. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fred is... Uh, he has higher stats than normal trolls do. Um, you we go. are expected wow. to... Oh, hey, that's actually really fast. Wow. Nice. It, this is the rarest enemy to get appearing in the game, so it's really nice that he's got, able to get it pretty quick. 425 is where he wants to be because he is going to get 75 points total 
for uh, dealing with Baba Yaga and completing the game. Yeah, somebody eye that timer for me because that's looking potentially like a new game one world re record. That would be insane. I'm keeping an eye. I'll keep an eye on it on the other side for you um, on Twitch. But uh, yeah, the difference between an any percent and a full game is uh, what do we call that? Uh, it, it's it's about a minute <laughs> to beat the uh, any percent. And I mean, David is the fastest at this category. So when do we stop time on the 100% for this one? I don't know, but that's looking like sub 23, which is... It is sub 23. Yeah. It's 23 minutes as of uh, her, her saying, hear me, O oh, element of air and wind, give me the power to save my own skin. And I think you end the timer at like whenever the uh, the spell starts getting cast, is my recollection. Yeah, let me check SRC really quick. I can do that for you, so you can focus if you want. <laughs> what am I focusing on right now? Being a hero. <laughs> You're come focusing on, on the credits, <laughs> although to be fair, oh, these, it's very this version close. of the ending sequence isn't quite as meme-tastic as the um, uh, VGA version. <laughs> yeah, I gotta retime that, because my old PB was 2255, and I wow. think that was... That is awfully close. Nice yeah, job. I think that was a PB. Which makes it automatically a, a new world record, since David has the record to begin with. <laughs> Let me find out where we stop time on that one. Is it... Yeah, it looks like... We stop... Once we... Once she starts powers that rule over so region Soggy. Uh, Kane, was, mean... Kane was arguing for a different stopping point, but either way, if you compare that one to this one, yeah. Okay, nice job. <laughs> so, uh, I guess oh. it's probably time to talk about what's going on right now and why we're actually watching the credits. Um, we are going through the collection category. So, David is going to be getting all 500 out of 500 points in all of the games and then you know complete all the tasks in the final game because there's more than 500 points there but um the this one of the gimmicks of this series is that when you complete one game you are able to port it in you know export your character and then import it in to the next game and keep playing with that same character which with whatever spells they learned with whatever stats they gained and a couple other little details about the game get uh included in the import file as well and uh, that just carries on from one game to the next to the next and we're going to have the same hero uh 100 the whole series in order to do that, though, we'd need to wait through the uh, the sequence here up through the point that um, the um, uh, game lets us save that export file. And then David has a batch file set up, I think, or some other method to make it I... fast. Let's see. Um, right now, I've just mounted a colon to wherever Quest for Glory 2 is going to import from. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, so Quest for Glory 2 is going to be played on a very different looking game environment. Uh, we are going to be playing the uh, fan made VGA style remake. And it has some extra content in the game and some extra features. For the most part, though, uh, none of that is worth. The Quest for Glory series is pretty good about not sticking you into dead man walking scenarios. You're not going to um, walk by a cat that's chasing after a rat and then all of a sudden, oh, hey, you didn't have a boot in your inventory, so you lose the game, right? Uh, none of that nonsense. For the most part, um, if you have put yourself into a scenario where you cannot possibly win it's usually pretty clear why yes <laughs> okay all right it looks like we're good to go all right then Sweet. i'm gonna go ahead and continue with this you haven't missed any gameplay just took a little longer on the transition uh welcome to trial by fire quest for glory six questing for glory six 
Uh, Quest for Glory 2 VGA actually gives you 25 points on input, so I'm going to stick them all into weapon use because some of the fights here are scary, and uh, let's, let's go for this. All right, and we're now into the next game. Um, this is the VGA style remake. You'll see a lot of the art looks very much in the style of uh, like Quest for Glory 3, which we'll be seeing as our next game here. Um, and aside from that, just this game works really nicely. It's um, uh, really well made. Um, so yeah, definitely can recommend checking this out. It, it can be a little tricky to get the, the game settings to where you want them to be right at the start. But speaking of the start, the first thing you typically do is head to the money uh, changer and exchange your uh, coins from the previous area into currency that is actually useful here. Um, depending on which version of the game you're uh, uh, importing from and to, you can potentially kind of get shorted on cash here. Uh, but we do need to uh, talk with a bunch of people, as uh, is uh, common uh, for trying to get puzzle points. You can keep see those uh, ticking up and from this game forward, anytime we do something that is worth puzzle points, you'll hear a satisfying little ding sound. Um, we're now getting a bunch of healing items from uh, Harik here. And uh, he has, of course, his money back guarantee. Uh, if you die from having taken any of his pills, he will uh, grant you your money back. Oddly, it seems like no one's come to uh, uh, cash in on that guarantee. Anyway, um goes to the charlatan there and gets a actually workable um, magic map. So that's how you do fast travel. Uh, fast travel does actually expend some time as you um, uh, go from uh, one location to another. Speaking of doing stuff quickly, we're doing some power napping and power casting here. Uh, one of the niceties of this version of the game is that... If you uh, import into this game with magic, it hands you the zap spell. Um, zap enhances the damage on your next weapon strike. Uh, given that he's generally a melee fighter, you can see where that might be kind of handy. And there's a repeat most recently cast spell button. I think it's F9. So you can just hold that in order to extremely quickly um, just spam that spell uh, while he's uh, in the process of sleeping from one day to the next to the next. This game operates on a calendar. There's four elementals, one of each ele element, uh, that is going to attack the town of Shapir. And so he needs to advance the clock until those elements attack and then deal with them. But in the meantime, there's time to grind some stats. So that's what we're going to be doing here. This time we're picking up rocks not to overflow our weight or do any glitches. David just wants to get a whole bunch of throwing experience and a lot of strength. And um, this turns out to just kind of be the fastest way to do that is to throw a billion rocks. 1,750. <laughs> nice. Not only to throw them, but to throw them very, very um, close to him. Uh, the game will usually render a projectile, although this game is very, very fast with it. That does matter more in some of the other games if you're trying to do mm -hmm. that. Uh, but y the closer you throw the rock to you, the faster the throw completes, the faster you're allowed to get the next throw going. Uh, this matters quite a bit. Every little part, we're at the point of Quest for Glory, and we've been there for some time now, where even just... Like the words that you're using, that we'd like, are you using a word that's four letters long when you could be using one that's three? We're at that level of uh, optimization on many of these games now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the EGA version of this game is ridiculously optimized at this point. Uh, oh VGA turns out to be uh, more convenient in terms of how it sets you up to do the whole series uh, import wise. Uh, but um, uh, you will notice that. Uh, Occasionally, David does actually type in a thing that he wants to talk about with a person. Um, this game does have the typical like dialogue trees that you click on. Uh, you can just go through that way. But there's also a combination parser, they call it, where you can either click on the command or type in the name of the thing you want to talk about. Uh, you can do this in order to talk about a subject that isn't normally in the tree just yet in order to kind of skip some logic there. 
Um, that said, this game actually does skip a little bit of the so-called metagaming aspect where, like, uh, in particular, uh, to the east of our current location, there's a uh, uh, person that has been turned into a tree, and uh, you need to help them out. Uh, but it in this version of the game, they force you to hear from the Entran Entrantress Aziza what's up with the, the person that's been turned into a tree before you go about... Um, solving the issue because otherwise your character just doesn't know what to do um that is actually not the case in the ega version um the ega version ran on the same engine as the the previous game you just saw um this one you know runs natively in uh modern computers so that's pretty nice the ega version also has way different glitches unlike the first game where a lot of the glitches were copied over it seems like they used a lot of the base code from the vga or from the ega game into the vga game uh in this game because it was a completely different team and what 25 years later 20 years later or something um n almost none of the code was used so a lot of the glitches that exist in the second game uh in the ega just don't exist in this one which is okay because there's new ways and even though there's not a lot of glitches in this there are a few uh we this game just runs faster there are certain events that are unskippable later on in the game whenever you're playing it in the original that are completely skippable and just a matter of just resting where um you could not do that before and we're talking like uh saves about something in the range of about seven minutes if i think i'm right on that and maybe a little bit more something i do want to mention is that this rock throwing training regimen is actually more dangerous than it appears because it's very mm -hmm. easy for me to blow through my stamina bar and then start blowing through my health bar too and if i don't realize that i've run out of stamina and i start using up all my health then uh, i could very easily work myself to death so uh, that's yep. something that i'm keeping an eye on is just i'm trying to keep an eye out for that too exhausted message but sometimes i miss it so you might yeah, want to he's clicking awful fast. So the, me the message disappears awful fast. <laughs> I, I did save at the beginning of this montage. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully after you picked all the rocks up. I did. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So I like to imagine that this area looks like a, a quarry with a nearby slag heap by the time he's done. <laughs> <laughs> Rocks are ridiculously overpowered in this series. Um, they don't do a lot of damage, but they do let you get away with quite a bit of jank, and they can be used to solve so many puzzles. Um, it's not just stats and skills. There are multiple ways, sometimes with multiple different items. Now, this isn't your typical point-and-click uh, adventure game where it's one thing solves one puzzle. You have multiple things that solve mul um, that's, can solve that puzzle, not just depending on class, but depending on where you are or what you have. Maybe you want to climb a rope, or maybe you want to float or levitate up, or maybe you want to, <laughs> we can glitch that out in the EGA also. Uh, there's <laughs> there's just lots of different ways to handle things. Sometimes you can talk your way out of a situation and arm wrestle for an item, or you could mm -hmm. just steal it, or you could calm the person down and tell them that they do need it. Um, it there's so, there's speaking a lot of, of ways. Speaking of arm wrestling, that's the most immediate goal for this uh, rock throwing uh, session, because uh, in the ETA version, you could just overpower the uh, the uh, weapon shop owner before he's expecting it and just win that way. But in this game, that doesn't work very well. And I have i don't have a consistent way to win at the thing except for actually being strong enough to get through it. And there's three different str strength thresholds you might be looking for for that. Uh, 120 strength is the minimum that you need to outlast him. But you need somewhere around 160 stamina for that, and so you're pretty unlikely to do that. So 130 strength is what I aim for. That usually only needs 105 to 110 stamina. 150 strength is super fast, but it takes too long to get to that. So uh, just so long as he's using his throwing arm to do the arm wrestling, I guess he'll be in good shape. <laughs> How much experience do you have now? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's not important anymore. <laughs> I'm seeing five digits, I think. <laughs> it, oh, it, hey, it's It might overflow. Nice. Yeah, I did spend all night throwing, and I do specifically aim for doing this overnight because I drink less water at night. Right. <laughs> 
experience is something that actually carries over from game to game. So from, I mean, it, it's only really used to make certain monsters appear in Quest for Glory 1, as far as I know. But in Quest for Glory 2, it, as far as I know, serves literally no purpose. And then they stop tracking it in Quest for Glory 3, but it is still always a part of your character's um, export file. So for some reason, they carried it along all the same. Okay, you just don't it. see it anymore. Yep. Advancing the clock a little bit more here. Um, the first of the elementals is going to be the fire elemental. We did see uh, that one of the shops was already burned. Uh, that's not what he meant to grab. Okay, there we go. The incense will attract the fire elemental away from the plaza. I dropped the lamp. Point, you drop a thing for him to go into and then squirt it with some water from your water skin. And then that makes it retreat into the lamp. And there we go. First um, elemental down. So I guess your first visit with Omar was before the rock training session then, I guess, if my Night. memory of the order yep. of things is right. Yeah. Night okay. three. <laughs> Big spender. You handed out one cent time to the beggar. <laughs> Visited the Adventurer's Guild there. Adventurer's Guild is kind of a... Uh, staple of the series just kind of a place you go to get oriented for how you're supposed to handle the area um in this game the adventurers guild actually has a uh, a training zone where as a fighter playing casually you are probably going to um uh do a lot of training sessions with uhura who runs the uh adventurers guild we'll see that a lot later though because uh, we have the ability to up, increase and decrease the difficulty of the game dynamically as the game goes through as needed. Um, so this is that arm wrestling, and uh, this. It, I'm just holding it, left. It is kind of a weird arcade arcade segment. I don't really understand how it works. Uh, can you talk a little bit about it? Um, I mean, all I can say for sure is that um, with. 120 strength 130 strength 150 strength you and you steadily holding increasing pressure you're eventually gonna outlast him if you have the stamina like he's eventually gonna give way and then you'll slam him to the thing but otherwise i don't know i'm just holding left i've <laughs> maybe <laughs> once managed to uh slam his arm to the anvil without uh without wearing him out, but I don't know how to reproduce it. Nice, there he goes. Boom. If you run out of stamina before he does, then obviously the opposite happens. Yeah. Um, so don't forget to talk about the beard. Mm -hmm. It's one of my reminders. Yep. Levitate <laughs> spell, trigger spell, those will be useful later. Uh, let's see, beard, air elemental, and fooler's earth. And a nice thing about doing Fuller's Earth last is that it's going to be on the bar when I enter here, which allows me to throw it immediately. Nice. Hey, I'm good at throwing. I can actually throw the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how you got so good at throwing. <laughs> that's a mystery that's actually, for the ages. That's actually a lot different in the original EGA. Um, this uses your actual throwing stat to determine whether or not you succeed at throwing the uh, dirt that you need into the funnel of the air elemental in the ega version you just need to aim which means you can technically have zero throwing and still succeed in throwing it correctly and exactly where it needs to go so once again we're going to see a uh poetry recitation by omar here who He's the Sultan. Um, he doesn't even dress up differently. He just is the Sultan and very obviously is the Sultan of the area. Um, he's at least slightly in disguise when he sets up like the beggar. But <laughs> yeah, this this is just him being a poet and claiming not to be the Sultan for a little bit. Uh, here we've got Ali Faker. Um, he is one of the Marx Brothers as a uh, little cameo appearance here. Um, and uh, all three of them exist in the game in one form or another if you want to hunt it down. Uh, Rakish here is a lion tar, and he's also a paladin. He's got a flaming sword, which is supposed to be relevant for taking out the uh, earth elemental because 
We're a fighter, we're not supposed to have any magic, but as it turns out, we know flame dart, so we're going, wow, you didn't even have to use the escape thing there. <laughs> Despite the, the corner kind of made the escape look weird. Okay, so he's just gonna burn him down with flame dart. It takes fire to take out the uh, earth elemental. Um, so he's basically just going to do the wizard's intended solution rather than uh, brawling him with the, the sword, which is kind of more dangerous and slower, so. Combat um, is very slow in this game. So it's one of those yeah. things where anytime I find a faster solution than combat, I use it. So yeah, so yeah so flame darts, even at its weakest, is just faster. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's safety save here. He also Here's receives it for free upon import. If he were playing the original game, he would not, re or the original EGA, he would not receive that spell on import. So this is another benefit of using this one. So that's Aziza the Enchantress. Um, making friends with her gives you access to all sorts of information. Uh, in particular, he asked about that tree uh, woman we were talking about before. So now we can at least get started on that quest. One of the things we need to give to the tree lady is um, that the earth that is the earth elemental. So now we're going out in the desert and it is time for some combat. Um, combat in this version of the game has been enhanced considerably. It is much more involved and much more interesting. However, it is in some ways a little tedious. It takes a lot longer to take out most enemies. Um, amusingly, the ghoul here actually learns some spells from later games of the series. <laughs> um, in this version here, they they added, uh, you know, the boom spell, also the hide spell um, to protect himself for a little bit there. Um, he does need to get the claws. A uh, curious detail is that anytime you flee combat, you always leave to the west, sorry, to the left, which right now is uh, west, but that's actually going to flip once he uh, reaches a certain point of the desert. He has now seen a beast uh, that is in a cage. We need to do something with that beast later. It's actually an enchanted person, but um, uh, I think we need to talk with the dervish about the beast in order to... Um, uh, then progress and eventually learn how to make a Dispel Potion and get that. We have to tell Harik about the beast. But only after we see the beast. Right. <laughs> Oops, Nothing all goals. goals here. Sheesh. Uh, so, as with the previous game, uh, the fighter is expected to, um, encount to defeat one of each type of enemy uh, that the game has available. Um, so that's going to be a ghoul, a brigand, a scorpion, a terrorsaurus, um, and a pack of jackalmen must all be defeated. Uh, I think I'm missing something there. No, there's only five. Okay. The game is being wow. highly uncooperative. <laughs> it really is. There's four monsters that can appear at night, and I'm only getting the one. This is what, what you get for P being the first game. It, yeah. I'm I'm just trying to find some jackal men right now, because those can only appear at night, and this is the only time I'm going to be wandering around the desert at night. So the reason he's uh, trying to get the enemies to appear here is that if he gets an enemy he doesn't want, which he keeps doing, <laughs> but whenever he gets an enemy that's not what he's after... Um, he can pop into this oasis screen and enemies just aren't allowed to be here. So as soon as he gets there, the enemies just despawn. Okay, I'm and going to quit again, out of the game ghoul... and then get back in because I'm beginning to wonder <laughs> if something's it's... gone wrong with the RNG. <laughs> I'm, th I'm beginning to think that. So safety save here, uh, quit out, and then let's get back in. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so there was actually a... Uh, amusing glitch that we we saw happen one time in one uh, the... there we go okay nice oh, there we go oh, wow. a single jackaman too single wow one. he's come in packs of up to five so uh this is going to take one fifth as long as it often will so that'll largely make up for the ridiculous um um luck that we had just a little bit ago nice <laughs> 
grabs a whirl of the dervish's beard and heads out. Sleeping till morning. Like the only safe place to sleep other than your bed in the whole game. I thought you could also sleep at the tree. Can you? You I can. You yeah, you, you can sleep to... at Jelinar's once she's back. <laughs> oh. It's kind of a weird situation where you would want to sleep, though. <laughs> yeah. That quick uh, interlude was from SwimFan. Uh, oh, the fourth game, I am useless, and then SwimFan will be uh, chopping in for me since I do the any percent of Quest for Glory 5 and have n very, very rarely seen anything of substance of that game. Uh, I don't know what that was, but oh well. Hello, Juno. Um, let's talk. So he switched off from the mode that lets him type options because um, if it allows you to type in the conversation topic, then pressing a number key will type a number in rather than immediately selecting option number that on the screen, which is in this case what he wanted to do. Oh, so, you missed one cycle. Yeah, uses the bellows that has the air elemental to attack the water elemental to chase it into a water skin. So he now has a water skin that has a water elemental in it. Then creating a uh, dispel potion. You're going to be doing a lot of stuff this day, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Is this... Not too much. Oh, wait, this this isn't also the or Order of Fighters day, is it? No, it's not. That's night 15. Okay, got it. But I do have one more desert monster that I need to fight because uh, I normally leave off as many desert monsters for... Uh-oh. Um, you were supposed I, I, to... I was, grab but... The... Uh, do you... I have extras. Do you need... Okay. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. There we go. Okay. How many dispel potions do they give you? Three? Three. Okay. So there's room for mistakes. Okay. Okay. So you only actually use one, but the game implies you use a second one in the ending, right? I think so. Uh, this remake actually uh, changes up the text based on whether or not you have a Dispel Potion. Uh, if you have one, then the game says you used one of yours, but if you don't, then uh, it says Harik made one for the occasion. Got it. Anyways, I need to fight a scorpion on this day before I continue on because you can't encounter any scorpions outside of Azir for whatever reason. So uh, Probably because they didn't animate the grab attack for whenever uh, you're on the Saurus. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. So the, the scary, quote unquote scary, uh, obviously David's got it under control, but the scary thing about the scorpion fight is he has a uh, instant kill attack. If he starts wiggling his tail, um, then he will grab you if unless you've backed away. And um, if he grabs you, he will sting you. And if you haven't already given yourself um, ahead of time a poison antidote, then you just die on the spot. Okay, so now he's sleeping to the final day before a caravan that leaves to a different city leaves. Well, and it's he night does need to go right to now. that city. Hmm? It's night 15. Uh, night 15 is when the EOF happens, and then day 16 is when we prep for the caravan. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually just don't do the fighter category, so I'm not as familiar with the exact mm -hmm. calendar. Anyway, um, the Order of Fighters is kind of a brutal place um so this guy is going to come in and just chop you in half if you don't dodge out uh in time you don't break away from the the binds there uh but at this point you're given a weird weapon the combat here works a little differently uh, what David wants to see is for uh, the opponents to get knocked on the ground. Oftentimes when that happens, you can kind of do this stun lock thing. And thank you, um, uh, opponent here, for uh, timing that exactly with my commentary. Very appreciative there. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, this guy used to be a huge... Uh, I forgot the word for it, but he was very problematic in EGA runs for a very long time, up until a Swim fan discovered a glitch that allowed us to uh, instantly beat him. That glitch doesn't apply here, but luckily I can just outfight him in this version, and he's not as hard, but he's still kind of scary sometimes. And yeah, I gave him a deliberate poke. No paladin for me today. It looked like he stood back up afterward, though. He doesn't die. It was an imitation sword. It's not a real sword. Oh, um, right. And with all of our weapon skill, we couldn't tell, apparently. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not exactly familiar with the weapon. It was very awkward to use. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have to visit Aziza on the final day uh, in order to get the... Um, uh, get a oh, little right. scene where you Sorry, find sir, I still have your sword. <laughs> Does that cost honor? <laughs> it might, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it matters, though. We are specifically playing through as a fighter. Uh, one of the, the gimmicks for importing uh, through this series is that if you are high honor, and especially if you're playing as a fighter, then you can uh, be upgraded into a paladin. Wrong uh, one. For... That's okay. I safety saved. I tapped the wrong button, so I got to load. Okay. What did you still need to do? I need to sleep until night, not morning. Mm. What still needs to happen at night? Uh, Omar. Oh, is it Omar? Omar. Omar. Uh, last Omar. Okay. That point total looks good. Yeah, so if you're super honorable, at the end of this game, you get bonus points up to 50 based off of how many honorable things you did throughout uh, the run. We haven't done those things, so we won't be getting those bonus points, but we will still be getting 500 points. We are getting all 500 points available to a fighter, but not the 50 bonus points available to a paladin, is the way this works. And we're mm -hmm. on our way. To give you an idea of the difference between the normal percent, or I should say this 100% and the any percent, if you're playing this 100% and you're at David's caliber, uh, you're at a 32 minutes and 20 seconds for a um, for the record. If on any percent, it is 8 minutes and 50 seconds. So there is a... That's a stark difference. Very 24, literally 24 minute and some odd, 23, 50, 30 or something along those lines. Uh, enough to play the game almost three times, any percent, <laughs> for every one attempt at 100. I'm sorry, four times. Yeah. <laughs> it's major sequence breaking in the EGA version. <laughs> major, major. But this is, that's just on, the, on this version also. Um, mm -hmm. the, the difference of, of how you fast it is. Yeah, the EGA version uh, adds... Well, actually, you guys have really broken the EGA version. That is so highly optimized now. I don't even know where the record is now. Let me take a look. <laughs> the the thing that holds it back is, as ever, um, having to wait in Razier. But there's now tech to speed that up, too. So <laughs> it's really hard tech, too. So <laughs> thankfully, you don't have to worry about that in uh, the remake here. You can actually just rest in Razier. So quick little joke session there. Uh with a little intermission and then, oh, hey, by the way, you beat all the, the, the baddies that swarmed the caravan. And now we're heading into Razier, uh, which um, this is kind of the final gauntlet of the game. Uh, the game is no longer really an open world sort of here's a whole bunch of puzzles, solve whichever of them in whichever order you want kind of a thing. We're now on a strict calendar with just one thing we can do at a time. Now, he is uh, going to fight this Pterosaurus on a source of his own. Uh, the riding source that he got for the caravan is not the one that he was riding before. The other one was a total chicken and was also the Emir of uh, Razir uh, enchanted to become a source. Um, this riding source here will fight for you. So makes that Pterosaurus fight a lot faster. One of the big things about uh, the remake is that combat is a lot more in <gasps> everything's he's fine, fine. Okay. he's fine he didn't rest beforehand that the reason no 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 that no, no, no 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 uh, that all that was expected my higher vitality required me to uh, rest once before and then once after okay <laughs> everything's uh, fine the scary thing is yeah. if you miss 
the uh the the cup. <laughs> uh, so especially in the EGA version where you're just not allowed to rest in general. Um, um the cup one, can kill one you. thing it's that happens there is that uh that shady fellow in the bar drugs you and that advances the clock by a lot. Um I guess it doesn't do it too much here because he's a uh, really high vitality fighter, so he kind of shrugs off the drug anyway. <laughs> we also have to make sure not to excessively offend that guy, or else it's just a game over. <laughs> David was trying to, to do anywhere. one of the few glitches that are in this game that aren't just optimized. There's actually a small line of pixels on that door that will allow you to teleport directly into the room we're not sure why it seems to be the only place in the entire game where that happens uh but it's really cool when it happens uh it really doesn't save that much time but it definitely is a neat piece of tech mm -hmm. so this is sharaf he's one of the kata um oh one thing that happened really quickly while we were running through town was um the jeweler kata uh from back in shapir uh, gave us a pin that is invisible to anyone who is not either a kata or the, a friend of the kata. So you use that in order to prove to that cat that you're a friend, and he shows you the way out. Uh, you can also find the way out other ways, too. You can also uh, just talk to him a bunch and be his friend that way. I guess that works, too. Ooh, one cycle. Did on you not safety save before? I did. I did. Log? Okay. <laughs> Uh, that that log foom ride is uh, pretty stressful. <laughs> oh, um, well, got to hop it again. That was great. That was great. <laughs> um, this this is one of the weirdest parts of the game. Also, especially if you're in the original EGA, um, the, the, this is just well known for killing games, and this entire section is known for killing runs. Um, it has recently, thanks to well, within the last year, like crazy new tech, this entire area is almost completely skippable now. In the other version. Here we're, the we're, version. we're going through normal. Uh, yes. Relatively normal, but it's it's not too bad. Um, so kind, kind of the lore this is pulling from is the same lore that led to um, uh, Disney's Aladdin's uh, cave uh, where the, the lamp is found. But Adavis here, who is definitely our friend, at least he enchanted us to believe so for a short while, um, wants us to get uh, the statue of Iblis. He then just teleports in and takes it and teleports out. I don't know why he did then, didn't do that to begin with. But in any case, um, David is now um, uh, getting three wishes. His third wish is to get the heck out of there. Uh, his wishes one and two let him get some extra stats, which will help out uh, with uh, shortening the grinding for subsequent games. Um, and then we've got kind of a cutscene battle here. Um, this is Kaveen, who's kind of the, the military wing of the uh, dictatorship that has uh, uh, taken over uh, Razier. And eventually in this battle, there's going to be two events, one where your sword is knocked out of your hand, and then another one where his sword is knocked out of his hand. If you want to be a paladin, uh, when his sword is knocked out, you have to let him pick it up and then uh, beat him legit. Uh, in... Wow, he's just taking damage rather than... You're doing too yeah. well here. You're supposed to yeah. chop that sword out. There, there you go. Goes. Okay, take that. And then you just murder him because you're a fighter, not a paladin. <laughs> yeah, and the fight would take like two minutes otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, combat is much more involved in the remake, but also more uh, tedious. Oh, so uh, yeah, that that was the final room. It's uh, pretty quick. <laughs> What do you about you do a thousand there? ways to solve it and a thousand ways to die? See, since I actually trained my fighter, it's not dangerous for me. You should, you uh, should try training, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Th th there's nothing about that room that is safe at the end of uh, a thief run. Uh, you have so little hit points by the end and so little skills that it doesn't. I mean, it, it, it's relatively safe now that we know good routes for it, but, I mean, the wrong situation, you can die pretty quick. Uh, what David did there was one of the solutions. He ran up into the room, um, ran away from the fight, 
and then just rammed into the bad guy, which is a possible solution. That room pretty much has a never say die attitude. There's a lot of different ways to save, um, to finish the finish the um, the battle. So now we're at the uh, celebration sequence at the end. Uh, what everyone says is a little bit different uh, depending on what you've done through the game. Remake, I think, also uh, checks the did you deal with Baba Yaga before completing the previous game flag as well and changes the text a little bit here too. Um, here we unsaurus the uh, Emir of Razier, so I guess that town will be okay. And then Rakish would offer to turn us into a paladin if we um, actually qualified for it, but uh, we did not. Uh, we are a fighter, not a paladin. So uh, we do, however, have all 500 out of 500 puzzle points, and that's what we care about. Mm -hmm. Now we'll export and go back to a legit, uh, you know, in-era uh, DOS game for Quest for Glory 3, Wages of War. Which looks like it's late loading now. It is loading now. All right. So yeah, let's go ahead and import our character. Oops, I accidentally imported as a paladin. Better back out of that. <laughs> this is a glitch I happened to encounter um one time and I forgot. Yeah, turns out it's this. like mandatory to get 100 percent in this game <laughs> to do this glitch so um there's a lot of weirdness uh, yeah. about this game in particular um and for 100 percent categories one thorn in the side is that normally it's really hard to get all 500 puzzle points um impossible but, in some cases yeah, impossible for most classes. Like, you have to turn into a paladin from being a fighter, it, it, and there's no other way to get all 500 puzzle points. If you're a wizard, you just can't do it, unless you tell the game you want to import as a paladin, cancel that, and then go in as the other class. What happens in this case is the game has left in memory whatever flag it is that says that you are allowed to get paladin points. So although David is not a paladin, as he does things that the game considers honorable, he's going to get special paladin abilities, and as he does so, he's going to get puzzle points for doing so. Um, at this point, there's a thief that got caught in the act, and you are part of the the team of witnesses uh, um, bringing him to justice, and he is declared honorless, and he thinks that's no big hairy deal. As for you, you get a hearing with the ruler, Raja, um, and you spend that whole time just looking at how suave you are. <laughs> I figure it's faster than trying to do it honorably there. I do want a little bit of honor, but uh, I gotta do it's it in the right place. Farm later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, this game has probably seen out of between this one and Quest for Glory two the most updates as far as uh, what the tech actually looks like. There is a lot of optimization that you are just not noticing what David's mm -hmm. doing here. Um, even the way that he's resting in particular places, um, th there's all sorts of tech going on, and uh, I'm even having a hard time keeping up with it, and I know what to look for. <laughs> so, uh, what we are going to see very soon is literally called bed tech. Yes. Um, so, uh, we do have to, uh, order a meal here in order, I think that's just worth points. We also have to, uh, engage with the welcome moment at one point in order to make sure that a person shows up later um, who will, uh, we just need to talk with them. Uh, they were a survivor of a peace mission. Um, and uh, we need to stop a war that's brewing uh, between the Simbani and the uh, Leopard Men. Uh, both of those areas are to the east of where we are right now. And now we're doing bed, bed tech. What's going on here is the game tries to stop you from doing uh, chain resting, uh, but um, in uh, the bed here, if you bring up the, the menu this way and you rest, it counts the, it starts ticking the amount of time you have to wait before you can rest. 
before. Um, oh, I didn't get it. Uh, no, oh, no, chest. I was no. just it. short of the chest. I was, okay. I was trying to open the chest there to skip this sleeping animation into day three. Hilariously, part of what you have to do to make opening the chest allow you to skip sleeping is you have to then uh, sit down on the pillows, which is a thing that they allow in the game. But uh, long and short of it is, he was able to trick the game into letting him rest like once every five seconds or four seconds or whatever it was. And uh, that passed the time very quickly, allowed him to sleep until day three, which is when now um, he's so, heading out. So that resting uh, bug is actually rather simple. The short explanation is that the game will only let you rest once an hour, but it sets the variable for when you last rested before it advances time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to wait for it to tick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, you just skipped my favorite glitch, the one you discovered, <laughs> David. That's okay. I've discovered other big glitches since then. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Um, there was a mega warp that was discovered that took the any percent down from something around 20 minutes, 21 minutes, I believe, down to seven. And uh, David was the one who discovered it, and it just happened on that last tre screen transition from one part of the map to the next. Unfortunately, we don't use that in 100%. So we're now at the Simbani village. We're going to meet with the leader here. Uh, essentially, what we learn is that um, the Simbani and the Leopard Men are um, uh, at each other's throats because somehow or other, Sim the Simbani have come into possession of the um, uh, the drum of magic, which is a item of big. Um, religious significance to uh the uh leopard men and then the leopard men have somehow come in possession of the spear of death which same deal but for the uh simbani uh, so now we've kind of got a overview of this uh, he was also constantly talking about peace which is an honorable thing to do and it doesn't matter how many times he does this um he gets honor each time so now he's training. See how much he's training? <laughs> if you just hold the attack button, your character just kind of spazzes in place, but you are continuously doing more attack Ow. commands and that is helping him train. You'll also notice that David is frequently fiddling with the... Um, Uh, the difficulty setting for the game, which is the skill slider. If he increases it, then he will get encounters more frequently on the uh, world map. But if he decreases it, then enemies will hurt him less. Uh, so he decreases it in order to train. He increases it in order to find enemies. For now, and at least. general reminder, save frequently in this game. Uh, this game technically has an autosave feature. But... <laughs> It, it uses it like twice ever. <laughs> okay, three times, I think. Um, and one of those only if you're a fighter. Uh, the Simbani training. Oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, like the warrior initiation thing does a but auto save. I, but I did recently have the game crash right before it would have gotten to that auto save. Oh, nice. <laughs> Honestly, this game does, I think, the most just crashing and burning of any of the games of the series, at least in its final patched version. Um, uh, Quest for Glory 4 is known for being super glitchy, but um, and I don't not, believe yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, not so bad once you apply the community made patches and that sort of thing. I don't believe 1.0 of Quest for Glory 4 is completable. I think it actually does box you out of the um, of the intended, of not only the intended solutions, any solutions. Um, <laughs> we played around with a 1.0 disc version of the game, and there is a lot of uh, questionable <laughs> game activity going on in there. I'll this game and... just seemed to have a weird engine thing, but they were just learning the VGA um, engine at this time. This is one of the first two major games that Sierra put out in VGA from start to finish. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do a rock throwing session now because I think this is a good time to do it. 
Um, there's another activity in this game that is going to represent a barrier that I need to have my skills sufficiently uh, up there in order to be able to do it. That's going to be the Simbani initiation. Um, and there's two parts in particular that I need to have the stats for, the spear throwing and the bridge. And, uh, well, there's no hard set um, skill that I need them to be at. It's just that... In general, the higher your throwing and agility, the better you're going to do at those tasks. Uh, the throwing skill is going to cap out at... I mean, it caps out at 300 in this game, but it stops helping you past 229. And, you know, 225 is plenty good. I'm going to stick with that. So yeah, 225 throwing, and then as much agility as you can get. And I imported into this game with somewhere around 250 agility, which is more than enough. So uh, there, there's kind of a, a hard cap and a soft cap on the uh, uh, the initiation thing. So uh, if he wants, to, since David wants to get 100% completion of um, uh, the puzzle points for this game, he does need to actually win the various challenges of the uh, initiation ceremony. Um, so because of that, he needs to actually be good enough at it. There is another uh, thing he needs to have which is enough stats for uh the leopard woman to be captured each of the three uh classes has a different kind of arbitrary thing that causes a uh a leopard a, a leopard man to be captured by the simbani held in a cage turns out it's a woman and uh you need to dispel them but um uh the point is that um uh, for the fighter, it kind of is tagging it to if it thinks you are ready to do the initiation ceremony because that's the way that you're going to kind of close out the game as a fighter. You're going to become a Simbani warrior yourself and that'll give you enough respect that you can get the drum of magic and hand it off uh, to the cool. leopard men. Yeah, that was except, a really generous way of putting that, Crow. Except as long as you help Yasufu during the initiation, then it doesn't matter whether or not you went, you do well in the rest of it. Yasufu will trust you enough to help you. Right. Yeah, so you don't actually need to win the initiation to be initiated. You need to complete it and not be dishonorable. <laughs> Or you can, or you can win it as long as you kick butt. <laughs> Reflecting a gem of a spiritual entity here. Uh, this is the heart of the world. Just a giant uh, tree here. And it wants some water So from the enchanted pool of peace. So we hand that off. We get a fruit that we'll need to... Uh, produce a dispel potion later. Um, kind of a common theme in these games. You need to assemble a dispel potion. Um, it's all right. It drops off. I think this is the floor. last ones you make. Yeah, this is the last one I make, and it's kind of a. Well, I mean, two of the ingredients you use the pool of. Uh, you use the water from the pool of peace in order to get one, and then you use the same water as a second ingredient and then there's only one other ingredient so there's not as much going on there this was not originally intended to be part of the series this the third game was kind of thrown in almost at a at a i don't want to say the last minute 11th hour but it seems like if you you know the devs have been pretty open and they're actually very active in the community they really do answer a lot of questions uh but this was the game that was kind of meant to bridge uh, your strength. I mean, they felt that it was a little too quick for the hero to go from saving one you know, major city to suddenly being able to defeat the uh, super big bad. Uh, so this was made almost as a way to bridge those two issues. Uh, also, I think it was a good way for them to get used to switching from EGA to VGA, which is a very different, a very different set of programming skills and... That, that's something that's some growing pains, of, evidently. <laughs> it definitely did. So, uh, what David's up to here, uh, he's gone to the easternmost um, overworld section, which is the only place that you encounter uh, uh, the ape men and the demon worms. You'll, you may have noticed that he actually 
skipped a couple of encounters against demon worms. Um, this was uh, necessary because, well, not necessary, but optimal because uh, he will get credit for defeating a demon worm later uh, whenever he uh, gets a scripted encounter with one. And he needs to fight that anyway for the intended solution for full points. So uh, may as well take care of that then. Uh, the ape men also appear in the uh, the final dungeon area, but if you fight one there, it doesn't count for credit. Go figure. There's a lot of arbitrary decisions on what counts and what doesn't count for points in this game, and you <laughs> just have to know. That is correct. Have I have no. I have lost a lot of runs to missing one very arbitrary thing or doing one thing the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, let me go ahead and uh, take a look and make sure you're not missing anything on your uh, reminder list. You haven't gotten the, the honey bird to appear yet at all, right? That's correct. Um, uh, he, it usually appears on my way back to Tarana the first time. Mm. Okay. And I'm heading that way, but I'm going to take care of some stuff in the village here first. Uh, just uh, do a couple of challenges with Uhura, but not the spear throwing. I put that off for as long as possible because I don't want Yohari to get captured just yet. Uh, let's make friends with Yasufu. How do we do that? <laughs> Apparently, the way you make friends with people in this game is you pretend that you're willing to play a game that someone really wants to play. And then once you pretend you're going to play it three times, you can say, let's be BFFs and then you're best friends forever. And that's that. That's that. <laughs> We're friends now. Uh, I did okay, set so skill slice. Do you slice. use this for an agility grind, or is this just points for dealing with Uhura? It's points for dealing with Uhura. You get points for challenging Uhura to the bridge match, but you do not have to beat her. So the optimal thing then is to get the points for starting the challenge and then lose as quickly as possible. Usually the easiest way to do that is turn the skill slider up and then say, uh, I'm out of here. I don't want to do this. <laughs> If the seal slider is down, you actually do the bridge match automatically. Um, what it's supposed to be, if you have the, the skill slider higher, is like if they throw their weight in one direction, then you defend by throwing your weight in the other direction. And then um, you get a chance to do an action of your own and then you hope that they screw up is kind of the deal. Oh. Um, yeah, do you need I'm, to do the. Uh, I'm doing the spear story. Throwing at any point? Spear throwing oh, later. Right, storyteller, right. Yeah, I'm doing the storyteller now because there's no way I can make it to Tarna before nightfall. So let's do this now. And you know what? I kind of want my skill slider down right now. I want fewer encounters for this. Uh, you do still need a running death dinosaur, right? I do. I can't progress the plot without it, but I. Timing getting from the Simbani village to Tarna, it's not super tight, but it's something that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. And, oh, on that note, we're going to go ahead and come here. This is the uh, third ingredient for the uh, Dispel Potion. We're just going to come here, and that fetch spell that I have, I'm going to use it to get the fruits. I'm not going to save the Mirabat, at least not now. Uh Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll later, eventually later, save the mirror later. Bat, but you won't get, you won't take the reward he gives for it. Correct. That is correct. Because we have some very, I don't want to rest. What am I thinking? I want to safety save here so that I'm absolutely certain that I'm going into the marketplace during the day. I want it to be daytime when I'm here so that I can talk to Harami the first before the first time I meet him. And uh, I didn't need most of this stuff until now. You know, I didn't run into the honey bird on the way back. I'm gonna have to not. have to deal with that later. Yeah. So now uh, 
David actually has money. The last time he was in this screen, he hadn't visited the, visited the money changer yet. He actually dealt with the money changer and some other shopping uh, while um, Harami was running away. Uh, Harami's the thief from way back at the beginning. So now he's collecting everything he needs to get from all these other merchants. He's also showing a note from uh, one of the other Kata back from Shapir. Uh, I guess this is like uh, Shima's cousin or something like that. So uh, you wind up getting a thing that you'll want later for free as a result. So now he's agreeing to meet Harami, the thief. And this is kind of the honorable thing to do is to treat him like a human. And now it's nighttime. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> He'll do more serious greed, uh, you know, helping later. Well, sort of helping anyway. <laughs> Part of the reason David's so worried about getting his timing right and about entering in before nighttime is um, certain events will only happen and certain timing triggers will only happen at day and night. So he wants to make sure he hands all of the ingredients for the dispel potion in during the day of this day before sleeping. Because if he hands them in at night, that's just going to throw all the timing off. Mm -hmm. He'd have to yeah. sleep two full nights through the night uh, in order to be able to get the dispel potion, whereas now he'll get it pretty much immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so kind of the worst thing that can happen is if the the time of day advances enough that Harami will show up in that first bizarre room um, before you actually agree to meet with him. Because once that happens, you can no longer get points for agreeing to later meet with him because you already did. So he's now gotten the Dispel Potion, which we'll need to... Um, uh, dispel the leopard men that is uh, captured um, which that has happened at this point right you can kind of do that whenever uh, no Yohari has not been captured she does not get captured until I do the spear throwing thing with right. I think 100 right and Uhura I won't throwing. challenge you to that until you have what is it 200 throwing or 200 strength or something alright let's, sa let's save the mere bat uh, and you know what I will try to do a quick little honor grind here. Ah. Uh, that works too. Yeah, that's a pretty fast grind. That is a good one. And the mere bat is... It does drain your stamina, but, like, it, it doesn't drain into your health. Oh, Hello. Honeybird. Okay, here's the honeybird. So once you've talked to the honey seller, it'll describe how the honeybird helps guide them to where uh, bees nests are. As it turns out, you need a honeybird feather uh for uh the apothecary dude so now we've got one and we will definitely remember to turn it in right yes yes it's on my mind i'm thinking about that honeybird feather right now i very nearly forgot to do so in my pb but i have the feather i'm thinking about it i'm thinking about it and here we go uh i have not turned in the temple gem yet that's something to, to be wary of there's Harami. So part of why he's sticking in the Tarna area for now is that... Yeah, let's um, do this. Just so I don't forget. Uh, yeah, yeah, good idea. Doesn't matter when it done. it's done. It, vision quest for glory. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Harami, um, he... Uh, ha you have to talk with him on three separate nights uh, in order to get credit for redeeming him or giving him an opportunity to redeem himself. So this is kind of a weird uh, psychedelic experience here. Vaguely Egyptian themed ish uh, cult here at the top of uh, Tarna's uh, um, uh, city. And uh, um, the gist of it is you need to select answers and symbols that correspond to um, uh, being in tune with the class that you are and also uh, just picking a good answer uh, at least once. Um, and as long as you do both of those things, you get oh. two separate sets of points for completing this stuff. Perfect. Got a monster you needed here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a monster you, that as a fighter you have to defeat. Uh, the horn of this monster is the... Uh, the Price. proof that you have um, uh, that you are worthy of even attempting to be a Simbani warrior to enter the um, 
initiation thing. Which we're going to be doing pretty soon here, if I'm not missing my mark. Uh, that is going to be pretty soon. Um, so I have put off Yohari's capture for as long as possible, just to make sure that I can come in here and get this regular conversation to ask about the spear and the drum. Right. And then with all the other uh, requirements pretty much out of the way, I'm now going to challenge Uhura at spear throwing. Uh, be careful because there's some arbitrary stuff that's going to happen here. You see, you're going to challenge and you're going to accept. You do that and then you throw three spears and at that point, Yohari is captured. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you have to throw three. But you have to throw three more to get points for this. Yep. <laughs> Easily most arbitrary game of the series as far as how it's put together. Uh huh. It's it so really easy odd. to miss this stuff. Also, now Yohari's captured. So, quick bit if you use the spim on the Awari board and then use the dispel potion, the hero's eyes will bug out every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, it turns Easter out it's an uh, attractive leopard woman, and immediately. The entire Simbani village goes from clamoring for her death to arguing over who gets to marry her. And it's it's kind of gross, but your your solution to the problem is to just take that answer out of their hands. Um, so, yeah, it, part of the prerequisites for marrying Johari, if you are a fighter, is you have to be a Simbani warrior. So we're going to do that now. Is it going to crash? So Is it going to crash? Is it going to crash? You... It's going to crash. Come on, David. Of course it's going to crash. Well, I don't know. It doesn't always crash. Sometimes I hey, get lucky. Oh, crash. wow. It no, no, no. Not we're, not, we're not free yet. Okay, this is looking all right. I think this is all right. Yeah, this is fine. This screen is so buggy, but it's only when it loads. I have not seen it crash once it's to this point yet. So. Okay, so for this particular challenge, you need to either get the ring in fewer moves or get it in a more clever fashion than yes, Zufu. Um, and so tying a vine to your spear apparently is smart. I I'm not entirely sure how this one works, but whatever. Um, yeah, so this one, there's like several um, answers that make sense will get you to the ring uh, before uh, your opponent. But it turns out lighting a savanna fire with no clear way to stop it is the only way that gives you full point credit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, next, uh, uh, Yasufu is uh, caught in a hole in the road. You can try to win this leg of the race by leaving him in the dust with stuck in the hole, but um, he, he will very escape. dishonorable. And, and he he'll, will beat you anyways. And he'll just engage his hyperdrive yeah. <laughs> and pass you anyway. <laughs> so you don't even get the victory <laughs> on that uh, race at that point. Anyway, um, there's two phases to this. Uh, there's the uh, the throwing target, just like what we did with uh, Uhura moments earlier. Uh, and then they make it start moving. And hit detection for what counts as hitting the target or not once it starts moving is baffling i find but you you can do it if you kind of get used to how it works it, like you, those spears that are stuck in the that seem to be stuck in the the wall behind i think those actually landed and he's getting full like bullseye credit for it okay i hope you like fanfares Safety safe here again, just in case I get unlucky. But like with the bridge thing, I should have the skill slider all the way down. Uh, Yasufu has a random chance to use the wrong move based on how high your agility is. And uh, that that scales with uh, the skill level. So he's more likely to make the wrong move if you turn the skill slider down, which is why I don't place it on middle or high and choose the faster moves. But 
He needs to make the wrong move two times in a row to fall. And, uh, yeah. But, but you're hoping for some luck here because he has to fall three times before you run out of stamina. If you run out of stamina before you win, then uh, you're not gonna win. And so safety save at the beginning of this sequence every time. Uh, this second round is taking quite a bit. He would so, just do any percent. It wouldn't take any time at all. Quiet, you. <laughs> yeah, any percent, you can just lose this again. Uh, as long as you ended it honorably. The thing you need at the end of this in order to let the game keep going is you need to uh, be able to ask uh, the Laban uh, to uh, take the, the drum of magic and have him say, okay, if you lose, the initiation that's a win uh right to yes yeah he's through uh but uh if you lose then uh yesufu will just uh kind of vouch for you and let you get it anyway so that that's kind of your out but he did win overall so that's full points for that gets the drum of magic and pretty soon it'll be time to get married but first we have to go back to tarna and contemplate the concept of being married to the uh married couple of lion tars that we know yeah um, yeah so and once they suggest that it's a good idea to get married then you can get full points <laughs> yeah yeah so we we have to go back here and we have to tell rakish about the leopard woman in the cage after she's dispelled but before we marry her so, so we get points for that. And there's also three points in the manual for telling him that we won the initiation, except it's bugged. It's not going to show up. So unfortunately, we cannot get those three points, at least in the do when playing this game in DOSBox. But... Do you uh, have your full uh, honor grind completed, or do you need to hand off more food? Uh, Paladin points are at 100, yeah, so it's good. good. Wow, it looks like healing is faster than taunting um, uh, Harami with money you can't use. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seems so. Have I forgotten anything? Let's see. I told Harami. I told about Dispelled Lady. To talk to the survivor. I did turn in the honey feather, right? Okay. Yep. You got that. I couldn't remember, actually. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember either. It's like, uh, There's wait. So many little odd points in this game oh uh, speaking of odd points there's there's a couple that you can get from uhura for asking her the right question but there's two different ways you can do this you can either ask her in a hut at night about marriage or you can go ahead and get married and see uhura guarding the gate and ask her about gifts there Th those those, those are equivalent yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're tied to the same flag. So, ask about gifts, but she won't let you free her, so we'll just go away, come back, and then, let's see. Knife, to show Give trust. Some gifts. So, Friendship. hopefully, uh, she won't hate us too much. So well, she's running point, away, but that's natural. does not know the name of his bride. <laughs> just to be clear. Finds that out whenever he meets her in a little bit. Now, conveniently, once we go into the jungle area, the first time that we get an encounter here, it is guaranteed to be Johari. Um, now, the the wizard has a harder time here because <laughs> the wizard has to like keep talking to Johari over and over again, which um, uh, only the first one is guaranteed. So the other ones, you just have to hope the by, die roll goes your fate. By the way, another arbitrary thing here, you can tell her about the drum or you can click drum from your inventory and then click it on her. Only clicking the drum from the inventory on her gets you points. Telling her about the drum does not. <laughs> <laughs> so much practice and testing, David, Isn't right? I, I am doing this from memory, yeah. I have run this category a lot, <laughs> both individual game and series long. I wonder how many other people have run this game. Let's find out. 100%. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, there is another one. There's another two for Wizard. I gotta do Wizard soon, because Wizard's gonna be the fastest at full collection, 100%. Fighter yeah, is probably. the slowest. <laughs> oh, Wizard 100%, yeah. I would expect a Wizard to maybe be able to sub 3 hour it. Maybe. Yeah, Wizard is very consistent. Um, right now, Purry is in the lead on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I just never actually got a proper recording completed. That I have record. done the category, but I have no recollection of what the time was. So anyway, uh, Juhari brought us to the Leopardman village, and we have uh, handed them the drum that they were uh, so distraught about not having. So once they have that, they're like, oh, we really don't care about the Spear of Death. Go ahead and take that, and we'll go ahead and make peace with the Simbani. So there's uh, going to be a... Uh, Peace Council takes place back in Tarna, so some more cutscene uh, flipping from place to place. Now we're back in Tarna. Yeah, the Only important it turns out a demon has possessed uh, uh, one of the people here, and that is uh, causing a not very peaceful Peace Council to occur. Yeah, so the important bit there is that that's the point when you would normally become a paladin, and the normal requirement for becoming a paladin is that you uh, need 150 plus honor which i definitely have but you also have to have not done any disqualifying actions of which there are shockingly few but the most reliable one is say no to the oath at the beginning of the game if you say no to that oath you will never become a paladin here take me so to your this village is the monkey earlier he will actually come here and act as if he already loves you even if you've never seen him before um the the thief's requirement for johari to suddenly exist is to visit the the, the easternmost screen which is where you encounter um uh, uh, manu the monkey here um initially so at least in that case it makes a little bit of sense uh but here um, um, it happens to make sense because we chose to, uh, go rescue the monkey because we wanted to get points. So we're going to be taken to the monkey village and we're going to go towards where all the demons are, uh, yeah. much to the chagrin of the monkeys that, uh, we, uh, are, so uh, palling around. More arbitrary stuff. As we levitate into here... Go ahead and grab this ladder here. Don't forget to grab it uh, because a fighter and only a fighter, if you became a paladin, you will not get points for that. Only the fighter gets points for grabbing that ladder. But then <laughs> it's going to get sillier coming to the waterfall because the fighter is going to need the monkey's help to cross the water wall. And he could use that ladder from the village that he just grabbed. Don't do and that. Got points for. Yeah, yeah, don't use the ladder that you grabbed from the village. Instead, you are going to grab a bit of vine here and use that. That will get you points, but not the ladder from the village. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, you are expected it. to collect the item, not ever use it. If you use it, lose points. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that we've completed the arcane ritual of getting points in this area, uh, there is soon going to be a forced encounter with a demon worm. We are actually going to take this battle. Um, the other classes just run away. But we need credit for defeating a demon worm, which this will give. And we also, um, as a fighter, just get points for solving this problem of the monkeys being scattered by this demon worm by beating the demon worm rather than escaping. So Come even on. if I already had credit, I'd have to kill this one anyways. Yep. <laughs> All right. So we're approaching the final dungeon-ish area of the game. Um, as a fighter, we're pretty much just going to plow straight through the threats, with one notable exception. Uh, earlier, we could 
have, uh, after saving the mirror bat, if we returned to the area, the mirror bat would have given us a fire opal, which turns out to be the key to entering um, this door uh, that is blocking this little building here. By the way, also... more arbitrary stuff, because you get mm -hmm. points for saving the mirror bat, but not for collecting its opal. Instead, you can get points here if you climb up and grab the eye but you don't get points for fetching it because you only get points for climbing up as a fighter or a thief but a wizard or a thief get points for fetching it oh hey remember and the paladin how does not take the climbing skill we don't know how to climb <laughs> of yeah. all of the games safety this safe one i've crashed here the before one where the ending is the most clearly very rushed <laughs> There's a lot of silliness going on here. <laughs> I I have no idea how I have how I remember everything in this game. Anyways, I'm turning the skill slider up now because I do want to start taking damage from this point onward. Uh, this demon is actually getting a few good right hooks in. That's that's all right. Bad luck on the swings, but I'm in. I'm in here. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Um, want a safety save sometime soon? <laughs> uh, I safety saved right before that demon fight. Okay. <laughs> so it's fine, and the game's gonna auto save in the final room. So let's not worry right. about it right now. One of like three auto saves it knows how to do. <laughs> The next game in the series is much smarter about autosaves. Okay, this here is like the longest input break of the whole series. If you wind up needing to do a body up bio break, this is usually where you do it. Uh, yeah. It shows you all of the friends you've at least allegedly made over the course of the game. Um, if you're doing any percent and you're doing the glitch where you just kind of skip past the entire rest of the game and just immediately act as though Manu's escorting you to the, uh, the final dungeon, um, then this same sequence will play out even though you haven't actually made friends with any of them. <laughs> anyway, here's Rakesh. Um, this person that's hurt here is uh, his daughter, I believe. Yeah. Um, and uh, was part of a uh, much earlier um, squad of people trying to get uh, peace to work out between the Simbani and the Leopard Men, but they were ambushed by demons, as it turns out. The demons have been trying to orchestrate a war uh, to occur between the Simbani and the Leopard Men so that all the death and destruction and hatred that that spawns will allow a world gate to open more and bring the king of the demons into this realm or something to that effect. So we now have to fight our demon uh, mirror double here. And uh, the faster we lose this fight, the better, uh, because Harami, whenever he sees we're about to die, uh, bails us out and we go into the final room of the game. Thankfully, uh, Mike Tyson's son here isn't nearly as challenging in this category. <laughs> So Although the skill slide is up. Uh, he's actually got for some pretty good decent stats, but in order to actually win the right of initiation, our base stats are just so high that uh, it doesn't even really matter that our weapon use is just good and not excellent because our strength and agility are spectacular. Just toss a spear at him. We're fine. <laughs> All right, so quick bit, that is it for Quest for Glory 3, but I am going to note that I have custom patched both this game and the next game. The custom patch is a small thing. It just will actually show point totals above 500 because it's possible to get above 500 points depending on the category in this game and the next. For this game, we should be seeing 501 points on the next screen. That is thanks to having access to the Paladin points, despite not turning into a Paladin. Yeah. Um, that glitch allows us to get 100% in this category, where without glitches, you literally can't. <laughs> so we've now saved the export file, and we're going to uh, port over to Quest for Glory 4. Uh, this is 
um, a slightly darker game of the series. Uh, we're going to be trying to fight against a uh, Lovecraftian horror sort of being called Avuzel um, and dealing with uh, the remnants of a cult uh, that had partially summoned it previously. It's also werewolves and just generally all that gothic horror stuff going on. This game also has a lot of discussion as to what the rules actually are. Um, there's you know, there's a lot to talk about in this game. Uh, for one thing, the you can get way over 500 points uh, depending on what class you pick in this one. So the question was, do we count 100% as max points at 500, as David was saying, or do we count it as the um, or do we count it as max intended deeds for points? And I think we kind of landed on the fact that you're just doing everything that would normally get you points and trigger the sound. One of the things you also need to consider in this game is that you can't really save and load and expect your points to work the same way. The game does not re uh, refresh your point total on um, on loads. So what you end up getting is, I mean, you could, in theory, not loot, or you could, in theory, get maybe like a quarter of the stuff continuum. done. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, do this one. Okay, so there's there's a weird, it's not clear exactly why it's there, but in in a couple of rooms, and break and there's... Bounce. Oh, dang it. I didn't, oh, didn't, oh, I didn't quite get it. Okay, he's trying to do a, a newer glitch of going way out of bounds in order to skip through that area without having to do go through the slide. Um... But he has broken the space-time continuum by using a combination of buttons, I think it's Shift-Y, that just causes the fetch spell to get cast arbitrarily there, which interrupts a script that is supposed to um, introduce you to Katrina, the not-at-all-suspicious uh, person that is just happened to be hanging out near the mouth of a cave that is itself cre created out of an eldritch horror uh, that you just got summoned to by some evil sorcerer or sorceress. Um, definitely not suspicious at all. Uh, I'm going to visit the Burgomeister here. He's a friendly dude. And he also, as it turns out, uh, uh, has to be visited inside his office as a prerequisite for kind of the, the major calendar event that happens in this game to occur. Kind um, of, on day five, there's, there's other to ways happen. to make make him appear, but every time I do a different method, he's not at his window after I rescue Igor on day five, so I'm sticking uh, to my yeah, usual methods. Yeah, so the winds up being slower anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can make it work, but it's, it's just not pretty. <laughs> um... This game has a number of glitches. We have workarounds for most of them. One of the th glitches that this game doesn't have, though, is a credits warp compared to like some <laughs> of the other ones. Um, quest for all the Quest for Glory games, other than this one, have ways that we can skip, and I mean massive, massive majorities oh. of the game. Like Quest for Glory one is one minute. Quest for Glory five, um, if it's going to take two hours to 100%, I believe the record is sub five minutes now. <laughs> Definitely sub six minutes, I know that. Um, this this game does not. Despite uh, being... You didn't actually get yeah, the hexapod. Yeah, thing. I noticed. You indicated oh. you wanted to feed yourself to the hexapod. <laughs> yeah, I noticed the point ding didn't show. <laughs> okay, so there's a whole bunch of little puzzles in this room. Uh, it's kind of a take on uh, the castle of Dr. Brain, which was the another game Oops. made by the same group of people. Um, but uh, this is Dr. Cranium, and um, a lot of the puzzles here you can skip just by mashing the question mark at the top of it. If you indicate you need help enough times, eventually it just says, eh, eventually you solve the puzzle, and then the puzzle's done. Um, you don't, however, get puzzle points for completing those puzzles that way. Uh, so we do actually need to do that in the 100% category, whereas most of it gets skipped otherwise. This is a quick little copyright protection thing. It was popular in this era of gaming because, like, copying CDs and uh, uh, discs was getting more and more accessible. So um, the common Sierra solution was to just include information you had to have from the manual in order to um, um, complete some portion of the game. And in this case, he's just getting a couple of uh, potions out of it. But uh, later on, he needs to um, 
uh, get a rehydration solution from that mad scientist. Uh, so uh, in order for that to happen, he will need to also know the arbitrary formula thing. And it's randomly selected from one of 26 options. He's going to farm. Uh, he's going to uh, uh, just kind of chill here until he gets an encounter. He need, as, as with the other games of the series, as a fighter, to get full points, he does need to kill one of each of all the monsters. Then he's going to visit an undead creature that is totally not a monster and that we very much want to befriend. Yes, I'd like to be friends. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, never <laughs> again to be seen. No more leisure suit, Larry. <laughs> yeah, so that's a part of the game. You can actually get some pretty useful information there um, uh, with subsequent visits with her. Uh, if you are a paladin, there's a whole quest to like release her soul, uh, but... Uh, for now, just don't interact with her further because, you know, going to the lake, she drowns you. That's her job. Uh, my recollection is that uh, you actually, like, bring both these Chernobis almost dead and then fight them melee, and I wasn't actually sure why that was your strategy. So uh, I actually zapped the one on the right first, but then I'm going to go to the one on the left, and it's going to be low on health. <laughs> of course. So, yeah, well, let's fight the one on the right now, and, oh, it too is low on health. Speaking of low, are you almost out of mana and about to drown? Yep. It's okay, <laughs> I can rest while gliding. You can also rest in the middle of that combat. Like, you rested for, like, eight hours while they were attacking you. Pretty nice of them to wait while you were uh, still getting ready. Yeah. <laughs> I do have one of the few puzzles that I can skip here and get points for it, because the points are for getting the bone ritual, not solving the puzzle. That puzzle's really weird. The solution is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> you just click each of the things in order and it works. Correct. <laughs> I've got the same combination on my luggage. <laughs> There's a so... lot of places that David is missing crashes. Um, <laughs> this game is so crash heavy, even with the patches. Um, especially when you're breaking it with speed. Super glitchy That's puzzle cool. here. Yeah. You have to take this pretty slow and you have to kind of double click some of the letters for them to actually work. Um, it, it's very strange. Once you know how to do that puzzle without it failing, you can. But if you're going through it casually, even if you know the solution is to spell out the name of the Eldritch Horror, which is a voozle, um, it usually just doesn't work. <laughs> so should be getting an encounter. Oh, skip the encounter by talking with a ghost. And this ghost needs to be convinced that she's a ghost. As it turns out, this ghost is Anna, the um, wife of the now... Oh, nice. um, uh, of the uh, old man that we saw briefly uh, just outside of Dr. Cranium's place. We have to fight another Chernobi here. The Chernobis we fought before didn't count um, for the uh, the you defeated a monster credit. We do need to return to the ghost here and don't actually have to say anything more, but we do need to see it another time here. At this point, we can now uh, inform Nikolai, hey, we found your wife and send Nikolai off on an attempt to um, meet up with Anna, which she does as a totally untrained civilian in a extremely dangerous forest. And, um, well, we needed a hat, so, um, we gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, you do some of the least heroic things in order to be a hero in this game. Also, just something to comment on. David's making... Okay, the combat, whenever your skill is turned down, is is not super difficult. This also has an automatic. But to optimize it, David's combat is really smooth. It is not as simple as he's making it look. Speaking <laughs> of smooth, it's time to sleep. And this is a nice trick that was discovered recently. I killed the Will-O-Wisps. That's not the trick. <laughs> I press escape in the rest menu and I sleep until morning again. As long as I picked it from the rest menu, I can sleep. 
Which is good yeah, because this... Igor does not disappear until day five. It saves so much time. Yeah, it's actually pretty funny. Um, for the longest time, we were desperately hunting for a way to sneak into the gypsy camp. Sorry, the Rover, Rover camp. Yeah, the, the this game refers to it as the gypsies. Um, that it, it in the era it wasn't considered um, as um, uh, uh, inconsiderate uh, to use that term as it would be today. Uh, but um, the point is, we were desperately trying to find a way to sneak into there in order to avoid this whole Igor uh, rescuing event, um, because essentially one of the rovers. Um, by the name of Davy, um, has Hi, Davey. been arrested for suspicion of being a werewolf who ate Igor. So by rescuing Igor, we prove that that wasn't the case. Um, Question so, in chat, uh, Rover is the expert. Um, here are Rover. you renamed the group to Rovers. So that's yeah, that's I, Quest for Glory. I, I don't think that's like a a common. Uh, term for them but that's that's what has become the standard for the series because uh the the game creators uh uh Lorianne Cole, Corey Cole and then the rest of the team that they put together to make a game called Hero U which is set in the same universe they retconned the name to Rovers so that's what Whoa, we're trying to That's what with. I want. Oh hey, Wyvern actually not an easy one to find nice. sometimes. 30% chance I actually looked up the encounter odds for the various encounters just in case I had one that was straggling. And right now my straggling encounter is the Revenant. That's the only missing one. So if you haven't befriended Davy, uh, then uh, there's a bunch of uh, wolves blocking your entrance to this area. And it turns out that in the uh, floppy disk version of this game, you actually can sneak in. Um, but the game runs so much slower in general that even having a major sequence break like that, which my recollection is Mr. PR Miller here actually paid out a bounty for finding that glitch. Finally. To be fair, he's never actually claimed the bounty, and I have messaged him oh. several times on that. Um, <laughs> he can't at any point, and I'm happy to pay that bounty out, though. It's not this about claiming a bounty. About here, by the it's way. about sending a, a message. <laughs> <laughs> so in any case, the, the, the glitch we were looking for was finally found, but it turns out that just being able to sleep for one day in a single click is even better than having the mega skip we thought we wanted. <laughs> and we and, and the mega skip was discovered what like a day later? Like it was mm -hmm. insane how fast like it was like the one thing we've been looking for for years became obsolete in like a minute. <laughs> No, he's not a werewolf. He's a shapeshifter. Uh, that's part of the conversation you have with him here. Uh, and, he and, changes and... from to and from wolf form at will. And all of the, the people of this uh, camp uh, do that. We've got some tarot going on here. This is actually a pretty cool sequence to go through. Uh, pretty well put together, I think. Yeah, and I uh, depending on which class you are, this goes through pretty differently. And... Um, if you meet with um, uh, Magda here um, on subsequent days, then you can get subsequent readings, and there's like four total. Thankfully for the speed run, we only have to sit through the thing one time, uh, because otherwise that would get pretty tedious. <laughs> and it's I only we're making it nighttime. Yeah, there's nothing for me to encounter during the day now. I've Taking care of all the day monsters. I think you still need a Revenant, right? Yeah, Revenant's the only missing one. Also okay. needs to deal with the Heart Wraith at some point. Although I think you do that like right after the bush or something. Yeah, right after the bush. Uh, so I did not. Very... I didn't tell Nick. You did not actually uh, do Ooh. Old Man Walking. All right, then uh, we're we're gonna go do that. Oh, hey, it's Katrina. The That's right. Not at all suspicious lady that we uh, broke time and space in order to skip before. 
Yeah, so small little oopsie, I forgot to do something, which can yeah. happen when you're doing uh, somewhere around 100 things in each game. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. So uh, essentially, we need to send Nikolai off to his death. Um, he's an old man. He, uh, we have found where uh, his... Uh, a wife is. He's, she's a ghost now in the forest. He doesn't sure. understand that when you say that. And now we're doing a technique which is incredibly powerful called yeah. Turning Isn't Walking. Uh, this was another one of um, Kane's many discoveries about this game, glitch-wise. And essentially uh, David slowed down the, the animation speed so that he could talk to Nikolai while his character was turning in order to start traveling in a certain direction. Because he was turning instead of walking, the game didn't realize that it had to stop the character from moving before the rest of the cutscene played out. So instead of having to watch Nikolai shamble off of the screen, which takes like 20 seconds or something, uh, he's able to just walk off. And now that we have reunited Nikolai in a fashion, <laughs> with uh, his dead wife. Um, we have taken his hat, and that's what we needed. Uh, we need the hat to give to a skull, because the skull just wants a hat. And because of that, we need to kill off um, this old guy. Um, As a side heroes. note, uh, the ghosts will not appear in the forest after midnight. So you have, you, in normal routing, you have to talk to him before you go to town and start doing the things that you're going to do here because you have to talk to the Domovoy after midnight. Yo. I'm getting tired. That's the sign for midnight. And, right, I always knock. Why do I keep knocking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's actually a question in chat. Speaking of wife, what happened to our wife from the previous game? Uh, funny story. Um, she ditched us for another guy during the previous um, uh, epilogue scene. <laughs> One who was supposed to be our friend. Right. And still is. And still is, yeah. I mean, we started and didn't complete three games of Awari with him. Uh, we're best friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've got the monastery of a uh, cult to Avuzel, the eldritch horror that is the horror of this area. Uh, we have fed Hector the Hexapus a uh, clove of garlic, so he will let us through. And we also rehydrated um, um, a... I'm blanking on the name of the creature, Domovoy. Domovoy. Yeah, um, the same lore uh, being drawn on as with Dobby, I believe, from um, a different series. Um, <laughs> we've got here... Um, a we have tapped a cask of some um, wine or slash blood question mark um, that was uh, owned by the um, head of this cult who is named Amontillado. So this we have just tapped the cask of Amontillado, and um, the second strongest we have stuff the hero has of, ever had. Yeah. We have had a vision of the doom that we um, need to avoid. So now we are using magic to enter the Adventurer's Guild. We never actually got the keys here. There are some books we need to read. Uh, some of them are helpful. Some of them give us points. And uh, one of them is needed in order to deal with the, le the Leshy later. We need to know who the Leshy is. Amusingly, um, one of the things that we read there was Hero Magazine, which is the magazine, well, the, like, the supplementary, um, um, documentation that came with the game. So I'm the idea is that the Hero bit. at that point gains all the information that's introducing you to the area that you would have had by having read the same thing. Kind of a, a cute little thing they did there. Right. So we have a doll now, by the way. <laughs> I yeah, mean, it's a very elaborate fetch quest to get this thing. And I didn't even even use the spell. Which well, spell? I, 
the fetch spell. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that usually gets most problem, most things. Not in this game, though. This one, you, there is a way that we can kind of glitch the game, uh, but it doesn't work from a new game. Uh, Crow did that, I believe, What was it last year, Crow, or was it Quarren Questing for Glory 4? Uh, yeah, Questing for Glory 4 was the one where I did the, the Dirty Ram playthrough of this game. So I, I think that's the one we're talking about here. That is correct. Yeah, you can use the chest that is in your room to... Um, it's not duplicate, but it's almost like transfer items between saves. I mean, that's a really bad way of describing it, but that's effectively mm -hmm. what it does. So you but, can... uh, the the core problem is that the contents of the, the of the things that you put into the chest in your room don't get reset when you hit the restart button. So well, if you hit the restart you... button and start a new game, that yeah. new game will have whatever the previous well, abandoned game had in its uh, chest. So at this point, we've given the hat to the skull. We grind up some bones to make our bread. We then uh, put that in a pie tin along with some goo and some elderberries. Um, this assembles a particular type of pie that our character doesn't know how to make yet, but we do. So we hand some corn to the um, hut because that's the way you're supposed to enter the hut the first time. And then the second time you're supposed to enter it is by uh, using by baking the pie that um, Baba Yaga has requested. So now we've done that, so we're kind of doing two visits to Baba Yaga all at once. And yes, this is the same Baba Yaga that we uh, turned into a frog at the end of um, Quest for Glory 1. She, she got was better. She mad, and she still doesn't like us very much. Yeah, she got better. Thankfully, she does accept bribes and will... Um, give us stuff if we ask for it, as long as we're giving her stuff in return. Uh, so we have things of equal value here. We have the humor of a gnome we haven't met, uh, which is the first thing we got. We then turn in a clove of garlic and are rewarded with um, a ritual that can summon an eldritch being that will destroy the world. That seems like about the same value. Yep. This is Well, it's of only useful points. if we get all five. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think we have at this point, if I'm guessing right. Yeah. yeah th this Baba Yaga is a little I different in this one. Um, even if you, in the any percent you don't actually there complete we go. her. There you go. In the any percent you don't actually complete Baba Yaga, but even in this game, you she still knows who you are. So they, oh, eventually, I think they had to figure that out. <laughs> Funny story about that axe. Once you, if you are a fighter and not a mm -hmm. paladin, then once you. Um, uh, defeat the Heart Wraith, which is the stronger wraith that was guarding one of the rituals. We beat it uh, just after we dealt with the bush. Um, your attack animation is changed. It looks like you're holding an axe. It doesn't do any more damage, but it turns out that that attack animation is just a little bit better for specifically the Necrotar fight, which we yeah. found out in one of our... Um, uh, Taskmaster events where sometimes the Quest for Glory community will just get together and say, okay, accomplish this obscure goal and try to be the fastest person who does it. And one of the goals was beat a pair of Necrotars in a row at the castle gates with the skill slider set to maximum. And it turned out that having the axe was necessary and we didn't have a clear explanation for why and no reason to suspect that that would be needed. Yeah, what weapon you have has no bearing other than attack speed. It has no bearing on the amount of damage you do whatsoever. Um, it, it's it's just coded that way. Everything is based on wep on weapon skill or weapon use. Uh, so, so it, like you could, I think you could pretty much just have a knife and do this exact same damage as a sword, or have a rusty sword and still do the same amount as a flaming paladin sword. But the flaming paladin sword looks cooler. It definitely does. <laughs> Makes me feel stronger. Alright, let's blow through that mana pool because I want to make yep. sure that I am put into Quest for Glory 5 with uh, the open spell. That is very important. This is one of the few times where this happens in the series. Quest for Glory 5 will erase spells from your repertoire if you do not have at least 50 skill points in that skill. 
It's very arbitrary. We're not quite sure why, but it does erase them. So if he didn't have 50 in open, he would not be able to use the open spell, which is super useful in Quest for Glory 5. It's actually super useful for the whole series. Okay, Probably the most so, broken spell. So we're doing some stuff here. So we just handed off a doll to um, uh, Tanya here, who is the daughter of the innkeepers. And uh, Toby, no. this doll was central to um, what the events that led her to become a vampire. Toby here was the monster that she had befriended that had freaked out her parents and made them so overprotective as to ultimately drive her into the... Um, uh, the the vampire's place. So in the, at this point, um, uh, we have allowed Toby to sacrifice uh, himself to uh, restore life to um, uh, Tanya. So yeah, one of the sadder scenes of the series to be sure. Uh, followed immediately by uh, Keep On Laughing here. We need to... No, no, no. The... This is uh, Punny Bones. Keep On was game two. <laughs> oh, get right. Well, whatever. Get the chicken. Okay, yeah, sure. Yes, I know. Chicken, <laughs> I get it the second time I'm in the room because... Okay, cool. I wasn't sure if that was the first or second. I missed it. I was like, no, the chicken. You get no, points for grabbing a rubber chicken, which is a possible solution to the... Um, Elderberry. Um, uh, the Elderberry bush, bush later. So yeah, Punny Bones here. The deal is he's supposed to be like really bad at jokes until you return well, his humor good. to you him, which is enough. in the form of a good humor bar. Um, it's it's it looks like ice cream. <laughs> um, but honestly, the style of his jokes doesn't change. <laughs> so uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, if you like puns, you'll like him. Um, uh, Mr. PR yeah. Miller here famously doesn't. <laughs> the only Sierra game lover of all time who hates puns. So we needed to sleep in our bed there in order to get the game progressing. Um, once you have done the the Tanya bit, at that point, Katrina is kind of losing patience and Adavis sees an opportunity uh, and sends you a letter that is supposedly like letters you've seen uh, before um, uh, from uh, Katrina. We've been speeding through the game, so we haven't been seeing that, but uh, point is, it's supposed to be uh, Katrina asking us to uh, meet up with her for presumably date-like purposes, and we'll find out that it's not actually her this time. So this is the Lishi. Uh, he's got some riddles for us. One riddle in particular we need to hear about and talk about this bush and goo before we plant it in mm -hmm. the, the place where it goes in the uh, Garden of Arana over here. Um, if we rescue it first, then the Lishi will uh, skip this particular puzzle. And, and we lose two uh, points. This particular riddle, at which point we can't get points for it, so... Just have to do that in that order. And now, do we have everything that we need to finish out the entire rest of the the riddle sequence? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, you're supposed to turn in uh, the pie to Baba Yaga before you can answer the elderberry bush riddle. And you have to see Baba Yaga before you can answer the Baba Yaga riddle. I don't know what gets you to answer the Rusalka's riddle. I suspect giving her the flowers, but be able to answer it now and i think the hero magazine pretty much tells you the wraith solution i believe the rusalka is also mentioned in the hero magazine it might be the only gotcha. thing you need to do for that one too the heart wraith thing is actually not a part of the wizard run for this game the wizard has this whole thing involving fairy folk um, and so the Lishi winds up having a riddle involving them, and I think you do need to meet them once in order to um, complete that, if you're a wizard. But here, I think we're just good to go. One of the interesting things about this game, somebody's just mentioning the arbitrariness of points in these games being absurd. Each game is a little bit different um, mm -hmm. as far as how the points are. Three is a mess. Uh, two is kind of rough. Uh, one actually... is not bad. 
I actually think two is probably the best in regard to points be because one makes you talk to so many arbitrary people, but mm -hmm. two keeps it a yeah. little more focused. Yeah, the w wizard in particular in this game pretty much does almost 100% run just as part of its any percent. Um, mm -hmm. Like, the, m most of the points are just kind of little side things here and there in this game, and most of them do not take super long. You know, I want to say them, uh, some of them do take a while, but uh, the thief the in particular reading. is kind of funny with, about that. It seem, his stuff seems to take the longest. Mm hmm Okay, so are we ready for end game here? Let me look through your reminder I things. Can't think of Unless anything you got riddles, missed. you got that. Leave the crypt. You did shake the hand of the reaper, um, and break Bro down the gate. Do you still need to do that? I do need to do that, and actually, it's kind of funny how that's going to happen. Uh, well, first things first. We're going to talk to Katrina in her bed here, and well, <laughs> she's understandably upset that we woke her up and also yeah, that we killed her severe also here. that we stole her child and killed her servant but you know i mean that maybe <laughs> okay anybody now since i have all five rituals i can actually run right through the gate but that doesn't trigger end game but the fighter gets credits for breaking down the gate so i don't have to fight those two necrotars but i do have to go out to the forest and then enter through the gate to start end game <laughs> so what you're supposed to do is the fighter has an alternate way to get into the castle to do the whole tanya thing which is to just bash down the front door and just deal with the necrotars that are guarding with it uh they, that are guarding it and it thinks we did that because the gate didn't spawn whenever we were um um teleported out of the castle at the end of the previous sequence so a little convenient there. Um, there is a ritual here that the game seems to think you need to have, that each of the classes has their own intended way to uh, get. As it turns out, you don't need to get it unless you want points, which we do, so we're getting it. I've left Detail that detail. Yeah, I left detail slider at maximum for most of the game just so the audience could hear the battle sounds. If detail slider is down, then for some reason that mutes sound in combat. Uh, but I do have a uh, trick coming up in the blood ritual room that I've only practiced with low detail, so I just want to set that yeah. just to be certain. Um, that room is kind of laggy once it starts animating, so I can yeah. see that could throw things off. Sure. All right, so let me go ahead and explain what I'm going to try to go for in the Blood Ritual Room. Uh, there was a little out of bounds here that was kind of discovered. The first thing I'm going to do is levitate once and then twice to get into position. And then I'm going to do the Blood Ritual, but very quickly, menu up, click, levitate. I got it. You see the sparkles nice. on the ledge there. Then, uh, then I've gotten it. And normally you would have to run all the way down and around to get out again, but... We're not going to do that. We're just going to run over the pit. Nice. I mean, you are levitating, so it makes sense to me. <laughs> There's actually a lot of ways to break that room, and the intended solution is never done in any of the routes. <laughs> so this is the breath ritual. Um, e each of these areas, like, you have to complete some task in order to uh, recite the ritual, then the that... Uh, room becomes active and then you have to escape from it alive is kind of the thing in this case the uh, breathing is going to start through that trachea that's kind of in the center of the, the background here this this room is kind of mean primarily because the um, in order to uh, use the correct horns or I don't want to do this room I'm are, just going to do the ritual from oh. down here and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't actually stop. Like, that's the sense ritual. You're supposed to be completely blind whenever you come in there and you have to go through and you gradually get your senses back. But it doesn't stop you from just grabbing the, the ritual and using it from the start. So as long as you know where the, the altar is. Final sequence, notoriously glitchy. Um, yeah. 
uh, various things can if you if you do stuff like with bad timing, the game will just kind of like revive out of these after you've beaten them or just lock up entirely or just not let you uh, free Irana at the end or whatever. So you need to tell the ultimate joke in order to start out of these laughing. Once again, you just chuck a spear at the uh, the final uh, bad guy because you're a warrior and I guess that's just your thing. And now we tap the uh, staff onto the crystal and release the soul of Arana, who had been stuck here in order to stop Avuzel from fully summoning into the realm or something like that. Yeah, the that room is so buggy, and in the disc 1.0 version, it's so buggy that you can actually point check pretty much 501. Right into it. We're good. Yes. Yeah. Still on pace for 100. percent Now we're going to have to marry as many girls as we can in the upcoming <laughs> game to get 100. <laughs> percent And I am going to be tagging out here, gentlemen. Swim uh, fan is going to be coming in to take my place for uh, commentary any second, and I think he's hello. here. Hello, I'm here. Perfect. Great. All right, so David, good luck. All right, thank you. But really quick, I'm teleporting to danger straight off the bat here. And I'm going to make a fresh safety save right here and, and another one for good measure. Uh, because That's important because pay attention here. I'm going to sleep for 16 hours on the overworld. After that second sleep... Ooh, nice. I got the uh, Cougarman. Uh, after that second sleep, there was a small delay until the random encounter actually popped up. Also, funny thing, those Cougarman count for both Bearman and Cougarman. <laughs> sure. Anyways, that small delay is going to be on the test later, so be sure to remember it. I've left a small <laughs> safety save there for later. Yeah, so this game has actually had some new tech added in the last, like, two days. So uh, that that safety save that was added is uh, part of it. Uh, there is going to be some dirty RAM involved. Our, our general ruling with dirty RAM is you're allowed to do stuff that abuses uh, poor um, like game resetting as long as all of the data required was created in game while the timer was running. Uh, you don't use any external tools. You don't use any save data that was uh, created in previous runs. So as you saw there, David's um, save game list was starting blank. Yeah, and speaking of new tech, uh, you may have noticed the glorious 3D graphics that have <laughs> uh, appeared in Quest, the Quest for Glory collection here. Uh, so this is basically the best game in the series because the graphics are so, you know, advanced. State of the <laughs> art, even. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Very much so at, at the, in this era, game developers felt like they just had to jump onto the the 3D bandwagon. Um, it Publishers is certainly, certainly a distinct did. style, and I think they did a, a much better job of it than most games of that time frame. Mask of Eternity. Yeah, yeah. So their decision to have it essentially be panoramas that have a, a 3D a uh, geometry attached to them that your character moves along just by clicking on a location that works really well uh it's kind of the same sort of approach that like final fantasy 7 wound up going with and that yeah. worked pretty well for it too so we are selling to chakra the the magic shop guy um knowledge about uh spells that we knew from other games of the series that he didn't and this gives us a bunch of cash which is important because kind of the, the first bar that you have to cross in order to get the, the main storyline to progress here is you have to um, enter the rights of rulership, which has a 1,000 drachma price tag uh, in order to uh, enter. So we have now done that, and uh, we are we have the uh, we have Rakesh vouching for us, and. Um, there are several other characters here, uh, five total, including us, that are vying to be the next ruler of Silmaria. This is our Greek-themed area Take that, uh, guards. for the series. No, I'm sorry. It was a joke. Please, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> well, enemy of the people. <laughs> 
Um, did that assist in some way? I actually don't remember that being tech. Well, the guards are going to chase me for the entire rest of the game. Oh, and you can still turn in the, the stuff yeah. to them even though they're angry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, I actually didn't know that one. That That's, that's awesome. <laughs> so the, the pattern is going to be he needs to collect proof that he has completed each of the tasks of the right of rulership and then bring that back to uh, the Hall of Kings uh, in order to prove that he's done it. So he's setting up a whole bunch of other stuff here, too. Uh, we've picked up a pair of mystic magnets. We're going to put one into this chest here, and then that will allow the other to draw us back to the inn as a place of safety or just to get back home faster later. Um, we're also stealing a sheet from our inn room and going to be giving it to Gnome Anne. And this is her land inn. Um, <laughs> and we have previously shown her a painting of a hot air balloon. We are eventually going to need to construct one. We've also now heard about uh, the fact that her uh, place is uh, in financial turmoil. We will have to help her with that later. Um, there's a bunch of like lines of conversation that we have to progress through in order to get uh, items uh, to show up later. Uh, like earlier, we had to talk to Andre the fisherman twice in order to get anchovies in order to eventually construct uh, some anchovy and artichoke pizza, which is a very important thing to be able to create for science. Just knock on the door and they, they actually open it for you. <laughs> uh huh. Yep. So we know the oh. frostbite spell. That's, uh, this that's is the, not good. In this area, we need to not be in combat uh, in order to get the uh, the chest. You can either do that by killing all the enemies or just by casting Calm. And for the moment that you're not in combat, uh, you can open the chest. And now everyone else flees because they think you've rescued the village because you got the sigil. We are going to have to uh, rescue all of the vill villages. Oh, um, Kokino's dead. Oh, That's no. unfortunate. We'll have to tell the guards about that yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, please, please, about please that, remind right? me. Yes, please <laughs> remind me after I teleport back from the Pegasus Nest. It's one of the most common tasks that I forget. Oh, this Atlas armband that I looted from Noxus is actually pretty nice because I don't need to knock on the door anymore. Now I can just uh, bonk. It's a little bit faster. Hey, okay, calm down. Again, I just want what's in here. Open the thing. Everybody and chill out. Just chill <laughs> out. The calm spell causes enemies nearby to just not be attacking you as long as you haven't hurt them. Um, yeah, they just stand still and vibe for a while. If you need to kill an enemy, as you may have noticed, there's a spell called Frostbite. We learned it from Katrina in the previous game. And in this game, it is busted. Um, I'm, I believe, because like, I played this game, you know, when it came out on period hardware, and it was not that strong at that time. I believe the issue is that um, Frostbite's damage is frame-based. Just every frame that is rendered whenever the spell is active, more damage is dealt. Mm -hmm. And on period hardware, this game was expected to run 15 to 20 FPS. Well, guess what? We're running 60 FPS here. Yeah. Um, it does seem like the game is smart enough not to go any above that. But oh, good. I even boy, man. so, it's pretty intense. We got yeah. boar men, not goons there. There's plenty of opportunities to get goons later. So. Got boar yeah. men, bear men, jack, uh, jackalmen? Cougarmen. Cougarmen, of course. <laughs> Except the blue cougarmen counts for both cougarman and bear man. <laughs> Someone dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> Bonk. Thanks for closing the door. It's only polite. I'm a yeah, fighter, not a monster. <laughs> uh, let me think. Do I rest an hour here? Yeah, I do. 
Okay. Something I have to be very careful about is that the other contestants can free their villages if uh, left too long. So, so I don't expect that to be the case here. Just it usually takes them like at Days. least a day. Yeah. And this is still the same day that the right started on. Yeah. Hey, you're going so much faster. You didn't need to get Gorman, right? Gorman and Boyman are the same thing. <laughs> so if okay, I got the Boyman, I got the Gorman. Right. <laughs> so you're being very extra here. You're you're going around doing all the tasks that the other contestants are supposed to do just to show them up, right? Pretty much, yeah. Did y'all watch Hunter Hunter? Remember when uh, Kilwa no. took the test the second time? That's what this is. <laughs> so we only were supposed to free the village that was in like the southeasternmost corner. I think it was the first one we did. Um, but we can get the rest and there's there's a lot of really cool loot we've been picking up along the way. I don't know how much we're actually going to use in this run. Uh, so actually oh, money wait, there's always bats. So money is actually a pretty serious concern for the fighter because there's two th items that I am required to buy and they are very expensive. The Dragon Slayer Sword, 10,000 drachmas, and the Magic Chainmail Armor, 5,000 drachmas. So, ouch. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need to get a lot of money, but luckily I've got a foolproof plan for that later. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that when we get to that. In the meantime, uh, Granglers aren't too bad. That means I don't have to find them later. Hey, how come you're gliding around the map, David? I don't know. Animation okay, error? Cool. Sometimes the map's a little <laughs> glitchy like this. Look, I'm, I, I don't know why. I'm T-posing on the map to assert my heroism. Nice. <laughs> uh, I'll Ugerman. demonstrate one of these just for to show... Nope, I'm not getting any points for that. I'm going to have to be careful. My mana's getting low. There's one encounter in particular that I'm looking for here, which is a weird ink, which I think there was some sort of contest or fan design of it or something. Yeah, I remember something vaguely to that effect. Um, like a contest to design a, a new monster for Quest for Glory 5, and that was the yeah. result of it. There we go. Ooh, uh, Pigman. Uh, uh... Rabbit man. <laughs> I, I think Weirding was the only one they took. I, I think man. the rest of them didn't take fan uh, input to come up with. <laughs> oh, I'm out of mana. Better get some of it back. Let's sleep a bit. Like, let's sleep quite a lot. Ow, that hurt! <laughs> You're bleeding from hunger. I am. <laughs> Anytime you take damage, it just has a bunch of blood particles flat out from you. I get like this around like four in the afternoon if I skip lunch. <laughs> uh, one of the nice things that I imported with that I won't have in a regular new game is the levitate spell, which gets me one of the fastest ways up here. Just, just fly. That's all I need to do. Yeah. So we need to get to the nest of the Pegasus that's flying around here in order to get some feathers. We're going to do two things with them. Uh, one, um, our favorite hippy dippy um, uh, apothecary from uh, Quest for Glory 3 has moved over here and he needs some Pegasus feathers in order to make some stamina uh, pills. Well, potions now. No, pills. Both. I still Both, I think. Either way. Um, then we also will need one feather is sufficient to... Uh, uh, create some Icarus-style wings. What is it that I need to remember? Uh, Warn to, about Kikino. Uh, yep. I typed that out in all caps like three or four times on the server. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I am seeing another comment in chat about being a hero requiring a lot of sleeping. So oh, yeah. there's going to be a funny thing about that, and I'm starting <laughs> to prep for it now. But... The fighter, you know, the fighter is required to do a lot of fights and win all of them. Well, our favorite um, bar owner, Ferrari, 
has set up a coliseum in town here where two people will duke it out in the arena. So the fighter has required tasks of winning most of the fights in that arena. Except against Kokino. You don't have to fight Kokino. He's well, already we do done. have to fight he's some now. other people who are also eventually going to um, meet the same fate that Kokino did. So we need to fight them before that happens, or else we can't get the points for doing that. Yeah, so for now, wait until just past midnight so that we can challenge Magnum and place a bet of 1,000 drachmas on ourselves that we are going to win that fight. And actually, there is a task for betting on yourself. Uh, but another convenient thing with that is that since it is now shortly after midnight, Nawar is out here. So we can talk to her for a bit, little bit and then move on. <laughs> I think she's one of the harem girls from um, the... From 2, yeah. From Quest for Glory 2, the, the palace there. If you were a thief, you would actually have snuck through the harem, but... Either way, she certainly remembers the hero well enough, and we're going to marry her eventually. Oh, God, these guards are still mad at me. Uh, I have this sigil. No, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Stab, you may enter the Hall of Kings, Stab, now. So you may or may not have noticed that... Uh, when I was sleeping, I eventually stopped being able to sleep, and when I came out of it, I bled from hunger. So, yeah, you can't sleep if you're too hungry. So we've got a few food items to buy here. Um, one we of also which need food for some other stuff. Yeah, we're we're gonna need this for the balloon later. We're gonna need this for romance later. Need this for scientists later. This for scientists, and then we're just gonna be grazing on apples all game long. Yeah, those pizzas are a primary element of, of physics and magic, right? Yeah, the most powerful element. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Represents roundness and um, the ability to get it in under 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you need to hold on to... Oh, looks like you got two packs of feathers somehow. Uh, so we stole some peppers. Well, borrowed some. Well, just took some and they were okay with it. Uh, we have them. to buy um, some healing items, like we get uh, credit puzzle point wise for doing so. Uh, but the ones that are really good are the healing pills. Uh, just get a whole bunch of those. And if you're playing this game casually and you're having any trouble, just buy like 50 healing pills and put it on the bottom bar. And then just if you're in combat, just kind of mash that button and you'll stay topped off. I went ahead and bought a magic spear really quick. It's one of the cheapest weapons that's really quite good, about 400 drachmas. Uh, I, I had a magic axe, but the magic axe's wind-up time is uh, really not good, and so it's not a very good weapon to be using. So the, the spear that I got, much better weapon. Uh, I'm sleeping until day nine. Be a better gamer. So hey, how soon do you get a oh. so uh, were you supposed to do a Coliseum fight? That's on day ten. Oh. The yeah. You were you were scheduling that like way ahead of time. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and you don't need to put the uh ring into your chest yet? Uh I don't have it. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, so the the first Colosseum fight that we're going to do is against Magnum Opus, but Magnum Opus dies after we finish this right. So we have to schedule that first arena fight for pretty much right after we have done this whole thing. Oh, but I do have Trigger on the bar, because if you know your Quest for Glory 3 lore, then you know that a wizard with a magic staff, you can cast Trigger on that staff and kablooey. Whoa. Gotta hurt. Just a bit. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> e. 
Uh, that room's kind of weird because like there's there's these staircases, which uh, the geometry of that room is just much more complicated than pretty much anything else in the game um, uh, where you actually do combat. So um, strange things happen. Moonwalking happens. Jumping happens. Uh, characters get stuck. It it really pushes the the engine to its limits. Uh, so as far some, as somebody in chat just pointed out that the centaur that I blew up did have a spell scroll on him. Uh, but I'm a fighter, and fighters don't really need to get spell scrolls, so that's not going to be a huge deal there. Uh, fighters oh. aren't big readers. Not really, no. Okay. If I buy the, I am. If it's on my bar, maybe I will remember it. Maybe. Wait, do I mm -hmm. teleport back? Uh, Ah, no, 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 no. I have a fight. I can't, I can't do this now. <laughs> yes, you do have a fight. It's following you around. <laughs> no. <laughs> they managed to fit their way through there. That's actually kind of impressive. So, yeah, I didn't want the magic axe for this fight because... Magnum Opus is prone to sidestepping, and that sidestepping is enough for him to dodge the magic axe because of its huge windup. The wizard does get points for actually learning spells. For you wizards who want to learn that centaur's spell without blowing it up, I recommend the boom spell. Uh, so I can't use Frostbite in this arena, but instead I've got a different trick. I can do an animation cancel on my weapon swing by pressing defend right right after it connects and then hitting attack again. Ow. Ow. He's being tough today. Not many armor on. <laughs> that was close. He was actually quite dodgy this time. No, How I don't have a safety save. That is a very good idea. I haven't safety saved in a while. <laughs> I love the little hero dance. <laughs> Ow. Okay, okay, look, I, look, I've got to heal you. <laughs> Congratulations, sir, now die. Uh-huh. I actually had a pretty scary moment with those guards because uh, they kept h hitting each other rather than me, which brought one of them very close to death. And I don't know what happens if one of those guards actually dies. Speaking of dying, Rakesh is about to, but Poison Cure Pill, he I'm going to save his life. But mostly because it's faster. I don't have to. I mean, Rakesh is your best bud from t all the way back in 2. Yeah. You can't leave him, leave him to die. Well, I could, but I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I, I very seriously considered it for the wizard route, but it just does not work. The problem is that if you let him die, you get arrested on suspicion of, you know, being responsible for it. You get cleared of it, but like the the arrest happens the next time that you show up in the the market plaza, which um likely results in you having to wait it's about 45 seconds for them to walk over to you uh, depending on where you uh show up so anyway this is famous adventure he's the guy who wrote <laughs> hero magazine and all the other uh things that um all the other like brochures that we've been uh that the player would be familiar with from having bought all the other games uh he is the like your hero arrived in Quest for Glory One as a recent um, uh, graduate of the famous adventurers uh, correspondence school for heroes, and well, there's the school. Um, so now we've gotten him out of his funk by giving him water from the river Hippocrene, and in principle, he's supposed to like tell us how to do all of the various things. Uh, for all the rights, but we already know that stuff, so we can kind of skip that part. Each one of the Quest for Glory games does a pretty good job of having, like, uh, an in-universe hint system, and he's kind of the one for this one, if you need hints on what you're supposed to be doing. Setting up for some uh, science here by mixing um, anchovies onto our artichoke pizza and some... Uh, 
jalapenos onto our pepperoni pizza in order to create some of the ultimate uh, pizza experiences for Perfect our... combination. Yep. And this here is Science Island. This is where the scientists have set up for uh, this particular area. And we have to prove that we at least understand what science is about in the Quest for Glory world uh, um, in order to get in. Oops. Uh, you I need to actually do it. Um, I, I, I know. Some, I'm used to just walking <laughs> away from the things that I don't want to do, but I do have to do this one. Thankfully, the questions are not random. Yeah, they're mostly Star Trek and Monty Python jokes, as I recall. <laughs> yeah, like, one of the questions is, what is a quark? And one of the answers is, a bartender. <laughs> By the way, be sure to uh, get look at the password for this one, because you are going to... Uh, did anyone catch that? Like, <laughs> the word? No. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't catch Not the password. Did in you? The slightest. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'll worry about it later. <laughs> so, I've got something else that I'm setting up for here. There is a task for telling Wolfie about the balloon that you are building, but there's. Did you hold hand off the? Oh, I see. Huh? I thought this area was blocked off until you handed off the pizza. Nope. Okay. I think that's the wings, right? I yep. thought it was both, but oh, it's okay. just the wings. <laughs> Anyways, you can tell Wolfie about your balloon once you've added something to the to the balloon, and your is... deadline for this is before you get proof of destiny in the fourth right. Uh, but I choose to do it now because I think it's the least out of the way now, because you can tell him after you've ha have a completed balloon, but then you'd have to land it, run back into town, tell them about it, then go back to your balloon and continue on your <laughs> quest. I just don't want to do all that running. Yeah, telling uh, Wolfie, who was the person who drew the painting of a hot air balloon, uh, telling him that you're working on making one is um, kind of the most arcane um, set of points to figure out how to get, in my opinion. It's... <laughs> It's amazing. It's I remember getting stuck there as a kid and that was that was the end of this game for years. <laughs> yeah, making the 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 balloon at all is pretty out there. Yep. Um definitely the most likely thing to send a player towards needing to just find a guide. I never figured wanna... out how to get to Science Island without a walkthrough, so I was stuck on this right. Oh, here's Elsa. Hey. She's pretty nice. We'll marry her later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to remember to visit the guild after uh, I turn into Hydra Teeth. Right. Yeah. Well, During well, the Rite of Destiny. Correct. Uh, anyways... The Hydra itself is also immune to the Frostbite spell, and in fact, it's immune to damage from weapons unless it's a magic weapon. So in a lot of your categories, you're going to be wanting something for the Hydra. If you're doing 100%, you might have the magic axe on hand, and the magic axe will work okay on the Hydra. Uh, if you're doing a single-game fighter 100% run, though, a single-game fighter is going to require a magic spear of some sort to break into Atlantis, so the magic spear is a very good option for this fight. Uh, let's get some Your healing. health is going down pretty fast. I know. <laughs> yeah. Healing pills are awesome. Yeah, insta-heals. Insta the the same thing that makes uh, frostbite really good also makes enemy breath attacks really good as well. So we're going to take the teeth from the Hydra, which is the trophy for winning the right. We're going to hand it off to Elsa. No, we're not. Right? No, we're, we're not. not. Okay, not, oh, in, really? not no. in this category. Mo okay. Most okay, other so categories. Most other categories would hand it off to Elsa because if you hand it off to Elsa, then you can sleep in your room to uh, to uh, advance to the next right, and so that's faster. But the fighter specifically has a task to win every single right. So oh. if you want all tasks, the fighter must turn it in. 
Uh, put your ring the in ring. the chest. Oh yes, thank you. I completely forgot. That's why. That's why I need Steve help. Magnet instead of opening the door. <laughs> it's faster. <laughs> The magnet is faster than opening the door. The uh, hero travels in style. <laughs> no man has got to think five crazy. Steps. <laughs> All right. Um, some more arena planning. The next arena fight is on day 15. And the, the last arena fight is somewhere around day 25. I've got... I've got kind of a schedule for when I want to be doing each arena fight but the idea here is I want to do this day 15 fight as I'm turning in the hydra teeth so I need to come in on some night during the week between day 11 and 15 then I need to go back to the arena on day 15 to fight uh, I'm gonna get a lot of money for having beaten Magnum so Let's go ahead and challenge Toro and uh, place a bet on ourselves again. Another 1,000. So, you know what? I don't know why I'm running. What kind of odds do they give? I don't know. Do but, think... but for some reason, they give Elsa. They don't think Elsa's going to win, even though she's by far the best fighter. Hmm. Sexism. Probably some sexism in place there. <laughs> Probably. Uh, so even though we're in our room, resting using the sleep button and just kind of sleeping standing there is way faster than you interacting with the bed. I have no idea what triggers the ghost of unfinished content. It's not a required task. <laughs> I got all the M4 I need and the map. I did, okay, I just need to buy another Harrow's Ring and then... Wait, tell Wolfie about the balloon. Of course, I mm -hmm. can do that now. And if I do it now, then I don't have to skip a Rite of Destiny conversation. Thanks. Come on, I'm trying to buy something yeah. from you. I'm not gifting this to... That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just purchased uh, another Harrow's Ring. Uh, the Harrow's Ring is basically the, the wedding ring of uh, this uh, area here. Uh, so now we have two. Um, that's not enough. We'll need another. It is. But, no, no, um, no. Two's enough. Two's enough? Yeah. Oh, right, because we don't actually hand off one of them, right? Yeah, Katrina says she'll marry you, but she doesn't actually take the ring off you. Mm. <laughs> Lucky for us. Uh, when do you have to buy the magic armor, David? Uh, end of the game. Okay. Right now, I don't have money for the Dragon Slayer Sword even, so I'm thinking about that. Oh, right. Did you already get the basket to I, le I leave the basket for the final right. Okay. Why? <laughs> There's actually very specific reasons for it. I do... I, there's a monster that I want to get, but I don't want to get it until I have the water-breathing amulet. That's the second ah, time you've right. killed Toro. And that, that, that little beach turns out to be a good place to hunt them down. Basically. Exactly. That 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 basket area is also a good place to get Granglers if you haven't found them yet. I'm thinking. Sounds dangerous. I know. Careful. <laughs> a dangerous pastime. All right, so the I... next task here uh, is the Rite of Destiny. Guild. Um, Guild. Which we will want to visit Elsa in the Adventurer's Guild. She's running it right now, along with Toro, the Minotaur who we defeated in combat but did not kill um, during uh, Quest for Glory 1. Um, so... In order to marry a girl in this game, essentially you need to uh, talk with them a certain amount. You need to give them a certain um, number of different sorts of gifts and then offer the ring at uh, appropriate time near the end of the game. So uh, Elsa, uh, I think all, almost all of the, the marriage candidates like flowers and Elsa also likes 
of like standard adventuring gear, so healing items are good. All right, I'm going to visit Folos again here because I'm hoping I have enough money for the Dragon Slayer Sword. I'd really like to buy it before the Rite of Courage. So, what have we got? Get rid of this shield and this armor and... Yeah, that's nice. Okay. You buy magic armor, right, too? I can't do that now. I can't afford it right now. Okay. Wait, and I did that before I go into the uh, dead parrot to sign up for my next match which is going to be against elsa best come on these buttons are finicky sometimes hey you got your second ring already i do have my second ring already okay. right uh the right of destiny is going to be one of the few where i don't want to time a battle with it. I decided that for some reason. Uh, the reason being that it's one of the few places where I'm going to immediately magnet after I'm given my rights. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, traveling from place to place takes a lot longer in this game than any of the other games in the series. Um, so... Uh, trying to be more efficient about when you go where turns out to be kind of a big deal. At this yeah, point, we're that, going to yeah. It, it really contributes to the the long run time of this one <laughs> compared to the others. You just you got that slow trot. Yeah, science was the answer. Science Island. Yeah, science yep. was the answer to the previous right. So uh, it only stands to reason that science is the answer again. So this time we're visiting it at nighttime. Um, the person, apparently the only person stationed at Science Island here um, has a split personality, which changes uh, whenever uh, six o'clock rolls around. And uh, now he's uh, Dr. Mobius instead of Dr. Pretorius. And uh, he, this guy is significantly ruder and he likes his uh, jalapeno and pepperoni pizza instead of the um, anchovy and artichoke pizza that the other one liked. Whatever I just ye yeeted off the bar was the wrong thing to yeet off. <laughs> All right, so whatever. Let's just... Uh, was it one of the components for the... Might have uh, been. Yeah. Balloon. Fast menuing is really hard in this game. Um, in all, all the other games of the series, the order of items in your inventory is based off of like the the ID number of that item just globally in the game. So it doesn't really matter which order you collect it. Here, as you add and subtract items from your inventory, the order of everything just shuffles around. So it can be really hard to get used to exactly when you're going to need that. In any case, we've crafted a hot air balloon of sorts here, and now we have the ability to go kind of wherever we want. So game opens up a bit here, and this will enable us to get to an island that is far to the northwest, and there's a couple things we have to do there. In the meantime, on the way over there, there's a dragon pillar that I have not visited yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and in fact, I'll go ahead and sleep until daytime, because during the day, this dragon pillar will always have dragonlings, and I get points for bloop, exploding one with cold, and hopefully they won't explode you. When's the last time you safety saved? That is a very good question, and uh, I'm glad you asked it, because I need to be safety saving more. Now, if I die, it's not a big deal, because I can just restore and start the room over again. But if the game crashes, good? then I'm in trouble. Yeah, this game has an unusual take on the automatic save concept, because the game is secretly automatically saving every time you enter a new room. And if you die, you can just hit the restore button and you're back to the start. However, it doesn't 
save that to a file. So if the game crashes, then you're out of luck. We now, David, the... are we going to get to see Rose dance in this one? Unfortunately, no. So oh. I'm so sorry. Just it's. This is one of the best scenes in the game. You give all the dryads hippocrene water to wake them up, and then once they're awake, they'll do a nice little dance with you. But you get points for pouring the water, and then the whole dance sequence begins, and it's a couple of minutes long. <laughs> and there's no points at the end of it, so... Uh, yeah, most, the, of the, most of the time... The animation is beautiful. And, you know, really ahead of its time. The music's even better. Uh, if you want to know, search up uh, Song of Mystery and Intrigue and listen to that. It's a very good song. Yeah, and the song actually is good. I'm joking about the animation, but the, song is, <laughs> the music in this is very good. Mm -hmm. I believe it's recorded from a live orchestra. Yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, we have a Mystic Magnet, so... No oh, damn. Yeah, we can just... Um, escape that particular cutscene entirely. What about the dance in the inn? Are you going to do that? That's uh, right of peace. <laughs> All right. And I am going to do that one. So we get to do it. Okay, <laughs> good. Yeah, a wizard yes. does have to stick around for the dryad dance because they get magic wood at the end of it. So uh, I should <clears throat> run wizard. <laughs> Next time. All right, uh, go ahead and turn in the Proof of Destiny, and this is one of the few times that I'm having to do a little bit of running. Oh, uh, yes, as yes, pointed you. out in chat, I did mm -hmm. just leave my airship on the other island, and so I now am, I don't have it near me anymore. Uh, but luckily, uh, Andre the fishy, Fisherman, uh, the places I need to teleport here, the places that Andre can go expands throughout the game and so you only really need the balloon to get to Delos Island once you've gotten the proof of destiny done then you can use the fisherman for everything else that you need yeah so like uh, the fishing boat won't get you to Hydra Island until you've landed there uh, from the Icarus wings once you've done that all of a sudden he's like yeah sure I can go there no problem and then same goes with Delos uh, to the northwest. Uh, once you've landed there via the boat, uh, via the uh, the uh, hot air balloon, then you're good to go to get there by boat. Um, it 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 makes game mechanic sense, if not story sense. <laughs> right. So this is um, the right of courage, I think. Um, That's correct. We're going right to go of courage. Eighties. Yeah, we're basically going to hell on a dare. Yeah, to prove how brave we are, we're going to face death by just going down there. While we're there, may as well do some other stuff. Uh, we do. We are required to get the uh, water from the river Styx in order to uh, complete the right. Uh, we're going to get a couple other things while we're there, too. So really quick, Cerberus guards the gate to Hades, and there's multiple ways of dealing with him. Uh, most of the speedruns of this game are going to trigger a bug where you back into the gate and then just juke around him that way. A paladin is required to bribe him, but a fighter is required to beat him into submission. You cannot which, he has three health bars, so this isn't going to take too long. Aren't you? Uh, but you can't beat him up inside the gate. You have to beat him up outside. I tried juking him. It didn't work. He's immune to damage inside here. Oh, and I uh, get rid of a ghosty just because. So I want you to... Surprisingly, there's a whole bunch of undead uh, type enemies here in the uh, underworld. And uh, there's Lemures, and then there's Mains. Mains are the orange ones. They float... And they breathe fire, which is terrifying. Uh, it is as much damage as frostbite. So uh, David's going to be um, doing safety saves. <laughs> yeah, just to make sure. And uh, uh, navigation can be pretty tricky in this area, just because a lot of the time you're so far away from the camera and so small, it can be hard to get around the enemies. 
Yeah. So one other thing that I want you to pay attention to is how long it's going to take to actually run around Hades. Uh, because there's something really important at play. Ow! Get out of my way, you. There's something really important at play here. The mystic magnets don't work. Which means uh, I cannot get out of here by teleporting. I'm going to have to be running this entire time. Or at least so, so you would think. And this Hades is a very large place. This room in particular is the longest room in the game. We're going to take this front path and we'll get water from the River Lethe as well as water from the River Styx. With the water from the River Lethe are going to cure Erasmus and Chakra from the, uh, the things that they have been poisoned with. While the water from the River Styx is going to be proof that we entered Hades. But there's one other thing going on here. The exits to Hades are, well, the, the exits from the rooms change where they direct you. I jumped down a ledge in order to get to this area, and I can't climb back up this ledge. In order to get out of Hades, you are going to have to talk to the guardian of the underworld, like, and it, and only after you have both done that and gotten water from the river sticks does one of the exits from the room redirect you back to the entrance. Um, have you defeated a mains at any point here? Uh, so there's one catch-all for ghosties, and I killed one as soon as I entered. Oh, oh, one of those things where it gives you credit for too many things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I killed one as soon as I entered. But yeah, uh-oh. Uh, uh, yes, 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 I'm fine. I was looking for the button. <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, those things are scary. <laughs> that was like a health bar and a half. <laughs> and mind you, this is as a fighter. He's uh, Of all the classes, he's got by far the most health um, mm -hmm. uh, going through here. <laughs> oh, wow, heroes <laughs> taking a pose. But since we talked to the Guardian, <laughs> we find two souls that are not at rest because we are here. The Irana and Katrina, both of whom died at the end of the previous game. We have to choose one of them to bring back to life, and we're going to choose Katrina because Irana will not marry a fighter, so we're choosing to bring Katrina back to life. Yeah, she seems nice. We're gonna marry her. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll only bring you back to life if you'll marry us. Okay. So now we've got some shenanigans coming up. That's right. We do have some shenanigans again because, chat, it is quiz time. Do you remember that thing I did at the beginning of the game where I slept twice and there was a small delay before an encounter happened? Well, we're going to load that previous save, sleep two times, and in the small delay, load this save, and we just got yoinked out of, of Hades. That's a, that's a huge time save. That is two minutes of time save. That didn't exist as of three days ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. found by the, the runner here, David. It was an accident, I swear. Uh, oh, you know what? This mm -hmm. is... Time to get the ring? Mm, no, this is when I planned to do the Elsa fight, but I also just realized that I have to see Katrina before I turn in the sticks water anyways. Right. So Actually, is that mandatory for the fighter? It is. I tested it. She just won't marry you otherwise? Uh-huh. Yeah, I have to do this first visit. Uh, Irana, you can skip the first visit, although for you magic users, you're going to have to learn that spell from Irana, so you can't skip that first visit then. Uh, but for you paladins... Uh, Katrina. Um, yeah. You, you have to visit before um, uh, advancing to the next right. Does Irana even teach the wizard a spell? Yes, she teaches a healing spell. Huh. I never knew. <laughs> Anyways, Katrina's b been a vampire for a very long time, so the magic of her place warps time to night whenever you visit her. She doesn't really, even though she's human, she's still not really comfortable in the light, which I completely empathize with. <laughs> 
Okay, now is when I had intended to do the uh, fight. Yes, day 20, we fight Elsa the Then. Let's see, have I forgotten anything? I have poisoned chocolate. Do you need to do another Nawar visit at some point? Uh, I do that on Rite of Peace. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if I can actually rest while guards are angry at me, so rest out here. <laughs> and I do want to keep this Dragon Slayer sword around for as long as I can because it is the best weapon in the game. But if I have to, I can sell it back to... Oh, hi, guys. I can sell <laughs> it back to Folus so that I can afford the magic armor. Something I don't want to do, but I will if I have to. Uh, I, again, betting... Uh, Against myself, so against this is the hardest Elsa. fight, maybe safety save? You're right. Yes, I will safety save. But I do have the best weapon, so we should be good. Oh, and I'm just holding down spacebar to do all this dialogue, and Hero just poses. <laughs> didn't even look armed. The crowd didn't like that. All right, let's go. Ow. Three hits, and it's that gone. That went pretty well. Yeah, that went okay. That's going to buy you a third date. <laughs> she's not going to hold a grudge for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's impressed. <laughs> Five games ago, it would have been one one thrust, and that's it. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> that was close. It was. So there's going to be a few plot things that I'm going to have to detour for here, because at this point, uh, well... I've got all the things to start healing the people that have been getting poisoned all over. Um, poisoned chocolate, uh, resting water, a uh, bit of a black lotus plant. What am I doing next? Oh, right. I remember now. I'm going to come in here and then leave. Uh, I'm waiting for a specific conversation where... Um, they talk about Erasmus being poisoned, and that's usually the third try here. Fourth try if you're a paladin, because there's an additional conversation for saving Udgarte. Okay, they're going to think, oh, Erasmus has been poisoned. You say goodbye, you get some magic seeds for that. You can t turn in all this stuff. You only really need to turn in the chocolate, but I'm just going to do the Black Lotus and Lethe Water for completeness. Oh, and then rest until just past midnight so that we can see Nawar again. She has uh, three balcony visits outside of outside of here, and I usually do um, like one early on in the game, one during Rite of Peace, and then one during Rite of Justice. So yeah, this will be our second conversation with her. Am I still here? What? You are still here. Hello. Okay. A man like you then the other thing is that the scientists have been up to something suspicious, uh, but we can't poke around in their lab until now because Gort has been uh, blocking the console. But since now they have some stuff to do in order to get to the underwater city of Atlantis, we can finally go to the lab and see just exactly what the scientists have been hiding. And, and you use this visit to basically find out that it was the scientists that poisoned the wizards. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> we will sort of find out that. Uh, but it turns out um, the the trigger for being, um, uh, you know, uh, given credit for having spied on the scientists just happens whenever you enter the room at the appropriate time. You don't 
actually need to open up the lab. Um, really? So what's supposed to happen is, or at least what the game implies you're supposed to do, is you head up to the console that Gort was blocking and put in the code that we um, uh, forgot to copy down before. But um, I just step in and then leave. <laughs> yep, and we're done. <laughs> so okay, you know what? This one's for chat. Tests. I'm doing this. Yeah! <laughs> Bad hero. <laughs> I love you could do that. Oh, and I'm sleeping because during the Rite of Peace, Elsa is going to be oh. like, wait a minute, my sponsor is obviously evil. I want you to know that my sponsor is obviously evil. It's a good time. For so she romance. snuck into your room and during the night. Naturally. <laughs> How did she get in here anyway? She used to be the leader of the brigands, if you recall, so probably yeah. has a pretty high lockpick lock skill. Took the back door. So it's possible to give these seeds to to Anne. It's also possible to give them to Arana, but you get points for giving them to Anne, so we give them to Anne. Uh, morning of day 22. Let me think. I have not signed up for my day 25 fight yet. I'll have to remember to do that. When do you have cash for the magic armor? Do you have it yet? Uh, not enough right now. But I'm expecting to have close to enough once I get the, uh, the reward money for betting on myself against Elsa. Which is going to be when I check in and sign up for the day 25 match anyways the lost city of atlantis is underwater we don't have a way to breathe water right now but we will soon you see katrina is going to help us here boom i now have a water breathing amulet i'm no longer going to be using the atlas armband speaking of which i can probably sell that thing now and be able to uh, get very close to affording the magic armor but yeah, once again, you don't need your balloon anymore. Uh, Atlantis is hiding in between three islands in the lower left part of the map. and But you can get to the lower left island and get off the boat there and use that to get to Atlantis. Uh, I need to put some things on my bar. What do I need on my bar? I need Beer? calm and open. I don't need the magic spear because I can just use the open spell. Right. <laughs> Best spell in the universe. So as a fighter instead of a paladin, um, we are going to be conducting the Rite of Peace in a, um, a questionably very... peace fashion. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> well... Joke's on these guys, because it's cold under the water. <laughs> Chill out. So, I guess the concept here is we're going to achieve peace by beating the Tritons into submission. It's the fight away. <laughs> yeah, but then you give a really good, like, speech about peace to the queen. And all is forgiven. Still? Even bother? Oh, do really? Are you just forcing peace, or do you? Yeah. Don't you? Or do you they actually? They have no one left to fight with. So. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. There's like a dragonfish or something in here. When you. I uh, yes. Something I have like Remora that. Too. Yeah. You can also find remoras in standard like random underwater encounters which is a thing in this game which is kind of weird yeah because there's no reason to do that other than to hunt down monsters if you're a fighter and you need credit for having done so <laughs> yeah so yeah we're gonna go come in here and since we've killed on the way in she's in combat mode so she's going to release a dragonfish against us which we are going to just <laughs> defeat the same way we defeat everything else. Mm hmm And then say, Enough. I want peace. 
<laughs> but now that we have actually gotten the peace statue, we get to do one of the best cutscenes in the game. One that you're not going to run into normally because why would you ever go into this inn through the front door? But you go in through the front door. And then, oh, she needs somebody to dance on the stage. And this is this is if you miss if you miss the dance in Quest for Glory two with Shima at the end, don't worry, it's still in the hundred percent run here with the hero. <laughs> and they just pasted the hero's head on Nawar's model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. He's got a good bikini body. And the crowd goes wild. Let me think for a bit. Oh, right. I never signed up for the Gort fight, so I'll go ahead and do that now since it is around nighttime. And yeah, the last arena fight that we have to do is on day 25. After day 25, there is a week of fights where you can be the champion, but you don't have to uh, do it, and I'm not going to. Who's even left alive at that point? Uh, Only Kokino and Magnum died. Oh, okay. Like, even well into the right of justice after the scientists have been arrested and Gort has been disqualified from the competition, you can still fight him in the arena. Hmm. So, yeah, I've got some... Yeah, I only get 1,222 for betting 1,000 on Elsa. Which is... Uh, those odds yeah. are a bit off. Sing odds. <laughs> also, since I have some time to kill, I'm going to go ahead and look for the basket now because I do have the water-breathing amulet and I do have one random encounter that I have not gone for yet. And let's safety save here. Oh, wait, there's a silly clown option now. Warning, you have just turned on silly clowns. Oops, you cannot turn off silly clowns once <laughs> it is turned on. Oh, no, not again. I told you, you can't turn off silly clowns. Warning, Silly Clowns is now exceeding critical mass. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Silly Clown alert. Don't touch that button! <laughs> okay, that's it. You can stop clowning around now. Okay, I can stop clowning around now. <laughs> I have ne I've never seen... Do when does that button pop up? I think once you hit a thousand puzzle points. Uh, the Source I Rex rule. Mm-hmm. So, Sara, the jewelry merchant... Her basket is missing, but it's always on this place in the overworld. And if you haven't gotten Granglers yet, then this is a good place to actually save scum until you get Granglers to show up here. The other possible fight here is goons, and we don't care about goons right now. But this room also has a place where you can dive into the water. And there's a monster that can appear while in the water, and there it is, a salamander. Okay. That's the last That's random the last find. Mm-hmm. Salamander man. I remember trying to hunt that one time. It was like I had to dive into the area like six, seven times before I got any. <laughs> All right, let's see. The rings are good. Oh, I should probably turn in this basket on the way up there. Yeah, I have a specific timing that I've been trying to work on for this uh, right, which is that I'm going to do the battle after I turn in the peace statue. Again, four reasons. Uh, here, you can have your basket back. And then here. We get a string of beads in return. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Can't the right of peace statue. Okay, poke, poke, poke. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, anyways, the scientists get arrested because of the poisoning they've done of the wizards. But oddly, the trigger for this cutscene isn't the discovery of the lab. It's turning in the lethe water. Huh. 
Feels like there might have been some missing scientist scenes that were intended. Maybe. In this game. There's a At, lot of intended things that Okay. Yeah. As I suspected, I can't it's rest here, but I wanted to be certain that the right would not yeet me past day 25. Mm-hmm. You know, despite there being issues like that with all these games, uh, Quest for Glory is really good. The developers are really good at uh, uh, making sure you didn't get into a, a dead end scenario as easily as pretty much every other Sierra game. Definitely. Like there is, like if you leave the balloon on the island, uh, the boatsman, boatman will still take you there, etc. There's Gort. He's another one of the right of rulership contestants, although I think he's disqualified now because he got out that he's an abomination made by the uh, scientists. Turns no, out he's a I, th I, th I think they care more about the fact that the scientists were uh, poisoning the wizards and that he's he was an accomplice because he's the one who delivered the drugged candy to my room. Oh, was he? Yeah. I actually if, didn't if, know that was established. Very uh, sneaky. No man tells you about it. Okay. Uh, Gort's little sad face makes me, uh, you know, not not blame him so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways, it's just neat to do this battle at this time because whenever you win a battle, time advances until midnight. And, well, hey, look. Look, it's past midnight. Who is often on the balcony after midnight? One of the several uh, possible marriage uh, <laughs> candidates. Yeah, here is juggling a lot. Is he's in a danger territory <laughs> here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the same thing happens in Persona Three. <laughs> Are you the thing? Yeah, except they catch you in that one. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talk to her then. Uh. Now's a good time to get the magic armor, but I'm going to rest seven hours and then reset the room so that both the fisherman and uh, the other guy, the blacksmith, <laughs> he's kind of a jerk, For so I've forgotten his name. You think he's made of money? He will pay more than this for it. <laughs> okay, I bought the magic chain mail. Now sell it. Just to make sure I have enough money. Is there anything else he had to buy? Nope. I think there's another fancy, like, frost something weapon. Nah. Don't need it. Not need it? Okay. Yeah, Elsa would accept as a gift one of those really good swords. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait, Elsa. Right, right, right. I, I thought you said Rorana for a moment. It's like, that seems very out of character for her. <laughs> you are some chocolate, some flowers, the more chat, and leave in return, and it's engagement time. <laughs> Did she say yes to asking for a kiss? I don't remember. I'm kind of clicking through these dialogue the options no, quick. Like some, something evasive. All right, she said yes. We're in there. But she didn't actually take the ring, so as far as we're concerned, uh, that <laughs> ring's still valid for yeah. being handed to someone else. Still a bachelor. Oh, hey, hi, Ooh. Elsa. Hi, Elsa. Don't you, come on, Would you like this ring? Next woman you see. Oh, okay. David. She took it. It's so right in front of her. We'll just pull out <laughs> the other <laughs> ring. Uh, this is nothing, honey. <laughs> What a silly game this is. Yeah. I can't believe Lorianne Cole, uh, you know, uh, agreed to this. Polygamy sub story. Okay. Uh, but there's one, one more. It is nighttime, so got to be where the assassin. Uh, but he's he might pop up and slow me down on the way here. But he's not going to actually engage me. No, he's not here right now. Okay. All right. Then let me go. I never really understood how that works. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. 
Okay, uh, let's safety save here just in case this doesn't work out, but it has worked out for me in practice where I do that to get the credit for picking a fight with him, and then I turn this in to get credit for uh, showing him up. I don't know how that works. Okay. My recollection is I had to... Um... And she took the ring. Okay, wow. Hmm. Whenever what? I had tried, I had to wait until she had asked me to uh, get the deed to the inn uh, before actually getting it, or else it just didn't work. <laughs> so have you set a date for the weddings yet? It's all one day, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, and uh, I just killed the assassin outside the walls. Yeah, Eat so, some fruit and go to sleep, hero. Uh, Bruno, one of the guys uh, from the first game of the series. Um, turns out he's the assassin that killed the king and also killed some of the other right of rulership uh, contestants here. Um, he's supposed to ambush you if you walk around late at night. Um, and then it's kind of a long thing where like you get hit by his poison dagger and then the... Um, uh, because you got the, the Lefe, no, not the Lefe water, something or other, the, the Black Lotus, because you turned that into the, the healers, they, uh, are able to, uh, save you. But as it turns out, the way they do it is they just have him technically loaded, but not visible on screen, hiding behind the wall. Um... So Frostbite, as it turns out, is able to go straight through walls. So if you know where he is, you can just kill him. <laughs> and uh, that will progress you to the end game situation. Um, There's my goon yeah, credit. And as it yep. so happens, Bruno is standing in the same place he's standing in the first game, which is right outside the main town gate. So <laughs> Only in this case, it's, you know... Secretly. <laughs> Inside of the gate, <laughs> somehow. Excuse me. That was weird. So anyway, it turns out Minos, the sponsor who had brought Elsa here to compete in the rights of rulership, was the person who was beh the mastermind behind all of the uh, nefarious, daring, uh, you know, dangerous stuff going on. Mino uh, Minos. Um, so, yeah, Minos was in, responsible for all that. Oops. It's also a sponsor. And so we need ultimately to uh, uh, store his place. And that's where we are <laughs> <You missed>. now. <laughs> <laughs> that goon is on a mission. i with that hammer. So opening that one alcove and getting all those potions is a very bizarre requirement for completing this room here. You also need to beat the Minotaur, and then you have to loot the Minotaur and loot Minos. Then By you the... also have to listen to this awesome you speech. You think you have won, do you? You are mistaken. I will not be defeated. I will destroy everything, and you both will die. I hold the prophecy stone in my hand. Speech basically plays in the speedrunner's dreams all the time. To destroy all of Silmaria. If I cannot rule what is rightfully mine, then I shall destroy it. You cannot stop me. No one can stop me. I am your doom. Actually, I think the floor is your doom. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 7.5. As we've mentioned, the uh, any percent completion of this game is like five minutes long, and it's because of the the ability to destroy the uh, the assassin from behind the wall that skips the entirety of the rights of rulership, and so as a result, that speech is like twenty percent of the run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're coming so up on the final battle here. Uh, First things first, the Dragon of Doom is being unleashed, but the dragon cannot take damage until this pillar is fixed. I have a couple of things I'm going to need to do in this fight. Healing Potion to Toro is for safety, but there is a separate task for giving one to Gort, 
and then using a fireproofing potion, and uh, Katrina just kind of burned through phase one <laughs> of the dragon's health nice. before I could do anything. I did give Gort the potion, right? You have to give right? the Minotaur as a uh, the Minotaur axe to Toro in no. this or any category. Okay, no. <laughs> he doesn't need it. By the love of the beast, Wait, is there no the sacrifice? No sacrifice. Everyone must live. And in fact, I can pause the game here, and the dragon's going to take damage while it's paused, and then the <laughs> dragon is down. Time is going to be coming up pretty soon on this. Time is going to be when I click the dialogue that says yes to becoming the king of Silmaria. And that's coming right up in this cutscene. It's somewhere in about 10 to 15 seconds. Thankfully, Katrina didn't miss there. She can actually miss hugging you and uh, softlock. <laughs> All right, the click is coming up. And time. Yes. GG. GG, David. He's among the people who will be marrying him. <laughs> It seems that Silmaria will have power. Elsa's really thinking, it really has something to say. <laughs> Long live the king. Yeah, it seems like the Katrina cutscenes and whatnot take precedence over the other ones. But let's verify. Did we 100%? Well, here are all the deeds that we successfully completed. Mm -hmm. Every single one. Now... But there's also going to be a to-do, which, which is going to show us what we didn't do. There should only be two tasks. Get married yeah. to Arana, and Hero actually sacrifices herself to save others. Arana will not marry a fighter, and this second one is a game over. So that is all tasks for a fighter. That is, that is a perfect 100%. Perfect 100%. Well done. GG. I did it. Looks like the timer ended. Well, there there was some technical issues between yeah. games one and two, but we ended at uh, well underestimate in any case. I'm not 342. surprised. 342. That's good. I'll take that. 342.21. All right. Uh, the next one coming up is Custom Robo. So before we get to that, y'all have any last words? Quest for Glory series is great. I very strongly recommend uh, picking it up if you were intrigued by anything you saw here. I think it is one of the best uh, Sierra uh, offerings around. It, it just does good things with uh, the adventure game series. And you can get it in a nice, easy-to-play package uh, through um, GOG or Steam or whatever your preferred uh, method is. And I think it's only 10 bucks American. So, what a steal for all five games. Especially you if you're a thief. <laughs> Especially if you're a thief. And we've got all sorts of activity going on. Lots of just general knowledge available uh, through the speedrunning Discord. So, um, anyone that's already a fan of the series and wants to learn a, l a little bit more about it, uh, definitely join us and we'll be... Uh, uh, happy to uh, clue you in on all sorts of crazy things uh, behind the scenes on how the games work. Yeah, come on in. Love to have you. All right. And then I'll go ahead and say our final words here. Uh, thank you so much, Crow and SwimFan, for joining me. It's a lot easier to focus on all of the things that I have to do with y'all helping me so much with commentary. I greatly appreciate it. And also thank you to Mr. Miller for his help with the commentary as well in Quest for Glories 1 to 4. Uh, I've got a few other people that I do want to thank along the way. Uh, Santa Claus and Lemming, they've contributed a fair amount to the Quest for Glory series. Santa Claus pushed Quest for Glory 2. Lemming has pushed Collection Any Percent. Uh, Kane Craft has discovered a lot of tricks in, in the various games, and I'm, I'm starting to blank on a few more names, but I know I've forgotten someone. Uh, oh, I'll also sh shout out One Short Eye for all of his videos highlighting the point-and-click adventure scene. And so thank you guys so much for all of your help. Thank you, Questing for Glory, for taking us again. It's a blast every time, and now I'm going to send it back to you. Oh no's, yes, oh no's found a trick in Quest for Glory 1. <laughs>